Hello and welcome to My Mom's Basement, presented by 3 Chi and Barstool Sports. We are back with another movie commentary. We are going back to the 80s. We did Batman 89. Now we're going back. We're spinning back a little bit. This is 85, I believe, right? Four. Like, correct? 84. Four. With us, as you could see, if you're watching on YouTube, is Alex Sulkin, returning guest, recurring guest of the show. He's a friend of the basement. He joins us all the time. He's done actually more than one movie commentary with us as well. Over on the Lights, Camera, Barstool page, we did Empire Strikes Back. We did Raiders of the Lost Ark with David Goodman. It was a great time, and we are going back to do the Karate Kid now. Clem is with us, as always. Clem, it's been a long time since you've seen this, right? It's been way too long. I mean, it's 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 an absolute cla- – if the Sulk is on Barstool, it means he's doing an absolute monster movie from the 80s. And I think this – hey, listen, Empire is like my favorite – maybe top three movie of all time. I don't Great think – I think this is in the same realm of you know existence, right? Top 20 or something, an all-time classic. So it's been way too long, and there's no two people I'd rather watch it within the basement than you, can, you two fellows. Oh. And everyone listening at home. This was Sulk's pick. So what was this like? What was this coming to your mind? What made you want to do this? Because I loved this one. Well, I mean, how could you not? And there are very, you know, people say, oh, this movie I can watch at any time, you know, all the time. And that that's kind of true. You know, there are movies you stumble on and you're like, I can just, I can watch. I mean, The Karate Kid like it's like strapping yourself in for such a great emotional ride. And I, I can still barely connect to the person I was in 1984, 11, seeing this in the movie theater, watching this scrawny Italian kid try to make his way through a new high school. And like Jews and Italians are like a little bit close. So I'm like, yeah, that's me. That could be me. <laughs> and uh, it, I don't know. I, I contend, and Robbie, we've talked about this. There's a scene in this movie, I'm going to tease it now, that I consider to be one of the top five scenes in cinema history. I'm saying it now. And I can't wait for you to expand on that because you said it to me last night. And I was actually kind of watching the movie last night. I was doing other things, but I put it on in the background to prepare because it's been a few years for me as well. And once I got to that scene, I just sat and I watched. And afterwards, I was like, damn, chills, you know, goosebumps on, on your arm. So I was like, all right, all right. I, I can't yeah. wait to hear him talk about this. You're Before feeling. we get into it, everyone cue it up on, you know, whatever you may get it on. If you have the DVD, Blu-ray, you can get it on YouTube or Amazon Prime for like, three four dollars um it's not streaming so you got to rent it but come on it's the karate kid fucking give ralph macchio some residual checks he deserves it <laughs> yeah absolutely. um before we get into it let's do one ad for three chi um this is the industry leader in delta 8 thc i know sulk you're a big marijuana fan well if you want to indulge in some marijuana but get a smoother high a little less anxiety a little less paranoia Get some 3G. It's Delta 8 THC. It's derived from hemp. It's federally legal. So you get it anywhere, bring it on planes. Nobody ever gives you a hassle with it. They've got gummies. They've got cereal treats. They've got brownies. They've got cookies. They've got tinctures. They've got vapes. Every product that a stoner could possibly want, they have. I love that they sponsor the podcast. As you guys know, MMB will give you uh, 5% off promo code MMB at checkout. So go there now. Get, get whatever you need. Get some stuff for your mom. Get some stuff for your dad. Get some stuff for, well, I'm not going to say your kids because it's 21 and up. It will give you a buzz. So don't get anything for your kids unless you're like a 60-year-old listener of this podcast and you have some <laughs> kids that are over 21. Get some for your kids then. They would be like, you're the coolest parents ever. All right. And they, God, if you get some 3 chi in you before you watch The Karate Kid, you're going to just love it even more. Yeah, you'll, you'll probably be crying by the end of it. To be honest, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many cheese I use, but there was there's some cheese in there. <laughs> I'm not sure the cheese quotient. All right, everyone, get it queued up. We're gonna do a three, two, one, click, and you'll all press play at the same time, and then we will watch the Karate Kid together. This is a great movie. A great movie for uh, especially if you're from New Jersey, because you're like, yeah, that's yeah. like like Alex said. You you kind of look at Ralph Macchio like that's me. Yep. All right, three. Two, one, click. We're good. All right, we're oh. pressing play. That's always the, the most stressful part is just making sure that it plays after we said the click thing. What's this, your this logo reminds me of Tootsie? Like I'm expecting Tootsie to come on, which is also a classic. But my my question was, what was the movie you think of? I think Ghostbusters. Oh, great call! Wow. Great call. That, I mean, now that you put that in my brain, it's hard to think of a different one. Ghostbusters might be the one. Tootsie the way, was a was a sulk uh, recommendation, by the way, that I watched for the first time just a few months ago. 
what a great movie. I, I really, uh, I, uh, it's a secondhand recommendation to all the listeners. I say go watch it now. Fantastic. Maybe the best comedy ever. Yeah, that's what you said when you, yep. when you uh, put me onto it. I well, love we, this opening, by the way, with, with yeah. the aunts and uncles from Jersey. Oh, Tony, don't forget Uncle Louie. Yeah, and there's also, I mean, secretly, there's no way that Ralph Macchio is in that car. It's like they didn't need him for this day of shooting. <laughs> it's just like pretending that, that someone's <laughs> in there. You never see him. Yeah. So that's when Mr. Macchio gets the day off. I love that. They're like, how do we how do we have a kid from Jersey? Just you know it right away. I Uncle know. Tony, Uncle Louie, get the Parmesan in the fridge. Here we are, the karate kid. And that's the thing. If you make it all the way to Cali and you're like, I left the Parmesan in the fridge, like that guts you. I'm an Italian. I know like that's all I would be thinking about is when I'm gonna get back to Newark to get the Parmesan from Uncle Louie. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so now tell me, because I'm old, like, you are you guys hearing this or do we not hear it? No, we're not hearing it. Okay. So we don't, don't get any of the great music. Unfortunately, we don't, no. All right. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that means maybe I can do the music. <laughs> we did say before, listen, we were trying to figure out how to do the commentary for you. And you were like, I don't need any sound because I know every line that this movie has. And there he is, Bill Conti. He's the guy who gave it to us. Legend. Same guy who did the Rocky soundtrack, of course. Yeah. Unreal. How many times do you think you've seen this, Hulk? Um, I'm going to go with right around, right around 30, maybe. A, a lot. Just a yeah. lot. And that, that's like in its entirety. Not just like <laughs> yeah. stumbling upon pieces of it. I've watched this movie through so many times. Is that, is this, was this um, a big cable one? I'm trying to think, like, I feel like, I know three kind of had its huge run, right? For a while yeah, there on cable and that. stuff like that. But I don't know if this was maybe HBO had had a run, but I feel like you could catch karate. Like Shawshank lives on TNT, right? And now they've yes. kind of moved to the Marvel franchise. Um, right. I feel like Karate Kid had a run too. Yeah, it must um, have, because I've seen it a bunch. Robert Mark Kamen, is that the writer? Has he done in, uh, other stuff other than the Karate Kid? Huh. Well, I would bet dollars for donuts that he did Karate Kid 2. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know factually. But let's I'm check sure his IMDB live on, the, uh, live on the pod. Let's do it. Oh, God. Was this a, did you see this in the theater, Alec? Oh, yeah. Was it like... Pretty like was it was it hyped like when it was coming out like you know kids your age were like like excited to see it like was this thought it was going to be like a hit in the theater and stuff like that do you remember totally and it kind of came out of nowhere because you know it it wasn't like a cast that if you heard any of their names you'd be like oh I can't wait to see that Ralph Macchio film that's coming <laughs> out it just all like came together where like it came out and critics liked it. And people liked it. And then more and more, you know, it just, it really generated and sustained for a while. Awesome. Oh, there he is. Look at that. And I'm, it, I'm, I, I'm shocked to see how much, how much this writer has done actually. Yeah, so he's, was, yeah. he did, he did the karate kid one, two and three. Yep. And then he did uh, gladiator, which was uh, the 1992 fighting movie gladiator. Right. Not Russell Crowe Gladiator. Right, right. I always make that mistake on cable. He did Lethal Weapon 3. Oof. He did The Next Karate Kid, which I've never heard of. I think it might be a TV movie. No, but that was Hillary Swank. Oh, was that the... Oh, oh. yeah. I think it was... Uh... And Miyagi came back for that one. Yep, yep. And Felt then he it. did yeah. The Fifth Element. Oh, I like that. He did the transporter, which, and then you'll sense a theme upon the next ones. He did the transporter, then he did Taken, then he did the transporter three, um, and then he did Taken two, and then he did transporter the series, and then he did Taken three, and then he did the transporter refueled. Oh my God. <laughs> he but got into, and then he did Age of Angel has fallen. He kind of got into the the action movies, you know. Well, but he he crushed it. He did great. Yeah, like to work that much and to have what a career. Up that many things made is insane. Yeah. Uh, okay. So he's arriving at his apartment building here and he just karate kicked the door into this guy. Making and bacon shirt. I, I'll, <laughs> what a, that's the first guy you meet at your new complex. I, love I know. It. I'm going to like it here. 
I love friend. they give it the outdoor courtyard feel too. Like he's he's in California, guys. Just a reminder. I know, but also like because this place is supposed to be kind of shitty, and like it is a in the valley. There are lots of places like this that you know are soul crushing when you walk inside. If you had to live there, you'd be like, oh. As a East Coast guy that moved out west, do you uh you know feel a special bond to this movie, especially now? Or are you like I fucking feel you, Daniel? <laughs> Yeah, we came out under the same circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> he for karate and me for the Late Late Show with Craig Kilborn. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I only felt like him because I wanted to be like him. You know, he was like brave and capable and seemed nice. Of course, I'm none of those things. Now, Clem, the first time you saw this, how old are you in 84? You're pretty young, right? I'm two, so I saw it um, afterwards. So probably, uh, I think it was at someone's house used to babysit me. They would always have that on. It was like a hit in their house, throwing the VHS yeah. and just uh, do work with it. One, two, and three. We went through the whole cat. I I can still like they live. In, I live in the neighborhood now where that was, and I still can like when I go when I go to their house or pass by it. I still think. Um, was the Chicago like a night and shining oh, yeah. on the- and I could just hear that in my head, in my mind's eye, my mind's well, ear, I guess. Two. That's two. That's two, yeah. 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 That was a good one. And that's just not Chicago. That's solo Peter Cetera. Let's oh, like- excuse oh, me. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't that's want to shout. Yeah, apparently they hate each other. So that clarification, if Peter Cetera is watching, he's saying, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so way, huge thank, music guy, huge music guy. I love music. Love I feel music. like that's like we talk about it every interview we do. But I love. We do. Music yeah, we should. Him. How could you not? Um, the uh, the mom, by the way, looks alarmingly li- like my wife, and so like so much so that on her birthday one year on Instagram, you know how you have to make a post about your wife and say here she is, my hero, my queen, all that stuff, and you have to. I put in like six or seven photos to swipe through. And the sixth one was just actually a still from the Karate Kid of her like, <laughs> her holding groceries like this, and nobody nobody said anything. <laughs> nobody amazing. commented like, "Oh, it's the mom from the Karate Kid." That's how much she looks like her. I love that writers are just like us, by the way, because you know when I text Sulk about movies, I definitely hold you in this high regard of like, man, the, he's you're, like such a such a great writer, right? You'll, you'll and, figure and, out that that's fake, but yeah, you, you talking about me writing that Instagram post, you're like my queen, my yeah, my hero, blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> right, just like us. I know. Well, yeah, you have to. Oh, here he is. Let's yeah. not step on his entrance. Oh, a little scared of him. Why? Because he's Asian, maybe? That's <laughs> wrong. We In 84, yeah, probably. We, we just got instantly, instantly scared of a five foot two guy. <laughs> <laughs> With chopsticks and flies. Yeah. But yeah, of course, we're making fun of it now. But the, the way these, the relationship that develops between these two characters is one of the, you know, it's right up there with, uh, Andy and Red and Rocky and Mick, I would say. Yeah. There's one point in their relationship, which again, it's kind of like what you said before, which I'll, I'll tease that always chokes me up. And you could probably know what I'm talking about when I even say that. But oh, yeah. every time we, when we get to that scene, I'll talk about it, but it's just like such a great moment. Yes. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And by the <laughs> way, this is what the eighties was all about. Just getting to the beach and playing soccer way too close to girls. That's <laughs> just in a, in a big mass of short shorts. And of course, the famous Elizabeth Shue. Had a chokehold on the 80s for a while there. Oh, yeah. She was she was great. Always delivered. May have to do Adventures in Babysitting, Bob, one of these days. I haven't seen that movie in forever, but that was one of my favorites. That's I've never Shue. seen that. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Blind it's spot not, for me. It's fun. It's a fun movie. Fun. Yeah. It. It's a nice way of saying it. it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I call like Thor Ragnarok is a fun movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, fair. You yeah. know, how about this? I got a haircut recently, just a trim. It's still long. Don't worry, everyone. <laughs> um, but my new haircutter is uh, an Australian guy. And the entire time I was like, uh, that meme I sent you, Alec, of like the kid with the veins popping out of his forehead, being like, "Do you fucking love Taiko Atiti?" <laughs> I didn't say it, but I wanted to. I didn't. 
Nice. I wanted to the whole time. <laughs> you could have. You know, I already used that card up on an Australian band I like, and I didn't want to be the you know the American that's just like, "Hey, dude, do you yeah. know this Australian thing?" <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can. I think you could get away with it somehow. Next time, next time yeah. I'll go in with the Taika. Yeah. All right. So he's being his buddies are convincing him go over and just go talk to her, man. And also, this is unrealistic. Like y- your friends never helped you out in these situations. No. Uh, yeah, and the the amount of times that this scene actually took place where there was contact like this, never. You just sit on the other side and be angry about why they weren't coming to you. Your friends actually did whatever they could to ruin your chances of being with the girl. The <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, obviously, this is the apex predator of 80s bad guys, Johnny, here. I mean, we're talking about, I mean, it's literally him and Darth Vader. Are like <laughs> best, two best 80s villains. Great hair, perfect 80s hair. The jackets, it's like all the thriller-based stuff happening. The jackets, by the way, phenomenal. I threw out a top five not too long ago of top five movie jackets. You were like, that was oh, a good one. Oh, it's too niche, you said. it's too. How about these jackets? You could have thrown yeah. them in. You're right. The blue or the red. <laughs> and meanwhile, Daniel's dressed very simply, very plain. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't have much money. He's from Newark, New Jersey. Here come the rich... No Dicks. logos on his clothing. I feel like traveling in karate packs was a thing in the eighties too, right? I mean, probably after with your this dojo. Yeah, go with your dojo, yeah. Yeah, we went from you know warriors to this. It's true. Warriors would be a fun one to do commentary wise. It's very fun. Yeah. I actually but, think I put a tweet out not too long ago. Like, what would people want to see us do? And I feel like a few people threw out warriors. It's one of those movies that's like in ways funnier and in ways worse than you remember. Like, <laughs> you know, like you think like, oh, that'll be fun. We'll watch Warriors. Then like an hour and 40 minutes later, you're like, I can't believe I just watched that whole movie. Yeah. This, breaking this your, is breaking your radio in the 80s had to be against the law. That had to yeah. be against the law back then. A boombox? Yeah. Come on. It's like jail time. And you can't do it. Single cassette deck, by the way. So it's like, <laughs> that's 84. Like the double cassette started coming in like 87, 88. Yeah. Again, oh, man. His, his karate strategy is off here. Yeah. When I play like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter 2, I was a big sweep the leg guy. Love sweeping the leg. That's like <laughs> yeah. my go to move. And the guy would fall down and you could just keep doing it. <laughs> so I, I appreciate John. I've learned to appreciate John as I've gotten older. You know, th- I didn't love the new Mortal Kombat movie. And when I say that, I mean, I turned it off pretty quickly. But there was a scene in it where they have Liu Kang just spam sweep the leg. And it was very funny. And, like, I think it was against Kano, and he just couldn't figure out how to combat it. I love the I, I love the movie trope of hero fights the villain at the beginning and gets his ass kicked and has to come back later. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's Rocky three. Totally. It's one of my favorite things in movies. That's, yeah. uh, you know, the Hulk against Thanos, although he never really gets a second shot. No, the Hulk, I, that was the most disappointing. He gets the snap. The most disappointing thing to me about uh, Infinity War and Endgame, and I love both of them, was that we never got to see Hulk go full Hulk, Hulk nuts. Yeah, I agree with that. Do we even get him in the battle scene at all? Like, do we see him actually? F- I think he fucks up a he, little bit, he right? Gets his, he gets his arm frayed, so he's kind of like nerfed oh, yeah. in the battle scene in the end. He's with uh, he's with the people that get trapped underground, Rocket and War yeah. Machine. Ant-Man. Yep. All right, so he just got his ass kicked. Is she rocking the, the Chris uh, Evans Knives Out sweater? It's a little... <laughs> <laughs> it is. The cable uh-huh. net, Yeah. <laughs> That's a great a great sweater look. That was very popular back then. That white. Oh, and they run over the boombox for good measure. Those fuckers. I think Sand everywhere. Her radio. Yeah, it was. Should have popped the soccer ball too. Like that's a real villain move. Yeah. Pop the soccer yeah. ball. Super aggressive. So here's the mom. She she delivers a great. She gets the uh, the information out of him in a great way in this scene. There's Mrs. Sulk just, you know, making some, some scrambles, <laughs> some scrambies for the book. That's right. <laughs> oh, that Minute Maid OJ takes me back, too, to the totally. 80s. Take off your glasses. 
<laughs> By the way, it's Ralph Match. I love it. Machio, I read, was 22 in this is film. That they said they yeah. didn't believe him. Is that Come legit? On. That's wild. Oh yeah, no, he's way older than you would think. Holy shit, he's my age. God, I can't believe you're that young. Could I pass for what is he playing in this? Uh, like 17. Can I pass or set? I bet. I bet I can. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Bob, I've thought by now you've turned 25. I feel like I've known you <laughs> for like my entire life at this point. 20, you're still 22. Oh my god, that's crazy. Yeah. And he's the most mature person on this podcast too. By the way. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so right, right here is they're playing "Cruel Summer," and I remember seeing this by Bananarama. I remember seeing this in the theater, and when this song came on, it was like. I don't know why it like opened up a part of my mind. I was like, oh, what a great song to put in here. And oh, my God. And he was just biking to school. But somehow the adding of great music, it can just instantly help what's going on in a scene that's otherwise like mundane or nothing. I'm co-signing that, too, because when uh, Bob said we were doing Karate Kid, that was the first, like, the song came to my head before, like, you know, the Crane Kick or Ralph Macchio or Miyagi. Totally. I thought of this. And they play it multiple times, right, during the movie? Does I don't, it, actually, I don't know. I feel like it might just be a long play right there, but who knows? Maybe that's what, because I feel, I feel like it's very um, Power of Love in uh, Back to the Future, where it's like he's just oh, right. skateboarding, and they just start playing. You're like, oh, all right, like. This is mundane uh, scene. Yeah. Mr. Mundane scene did just get a lot better. Yeah, good call. Yep. Silk, do you have a go-to favorite use of a song in a movie? Uh, you mean, oh, you mean like if, if, if asked, like what is Yeah, like favorite? something like that. Like what's your favorite? Yeah. Huh. I don't, I don't think I have a go-to, but I'll think about it as we're watching. Cause yeah, I, if you could come up I with like one, obviously the, I feel like the chalk one that everyone loves to bring up is tiny dancer, almost famous, which is like, of course it's amazing. Nope. You don't like that. I didn't love that movie. Oh fuck. Man, I know. That's... I know. I realized we're going to walk off at the beginning. Now I'm going to walk off on you. <laughs> Maybe I have to watch it again. I don't know. I, 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 at the time I just wasn't buying it. It seemed to, just a little bit too precious for me. Oh, seems man. to really and know what a good vibe it's giving you all. You know, it, gives, it like gives that. me that good vibe. I know. And it goes <laughs> like... um, do you like The Martian? Have you seen The Martian with Matt Damon? I, I do like that. Yeah. They use uh, Starman by Bowie in that. Yes. I really love that. I loved um, in the similar vein because you brought up Bowie. I don't know if this is my favorite, but I really loved uh, the, the guy in uh, Life Aquatic. Uh, singing the Bowie songs in like Portuguese, I think. I haven't seen that. Yeah. Oh, you haven't seen Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou? No. Oh, I would recommend that. All right. I'll, I'll add mm-hmm. it to the list. You know, I watch all your recommendations. Yeah, I, I think that's very good. Moon Age Daydream is a good one in Guardians. Yeah. I, w- I was going to say, you know, mine is Rubber Band Man when they show up in Infinity <laughs> War. That's basically yeah, the that was, moment that ever. The theater went nuts. Yeah. James happened. James Gunn just recently said it was his choice. It was his like suggestion to throw that in as the intro, which I think everyone cu- cu- could have kind of guessed, right? Yeah. This was so perfect. Mm-hmm. Shirts yeah. versus skins, by the way. Talk about 80s. Oh, so 80s. And by the yeah. way, I always did everything humanly possible to get on the shirts team. Uh, me too, brother. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're we're going to make that a clean sweep. The big guy never <laughs> likes being uh, on, this, on the skins team. And I was it way too many. I was it probably like a handful of times, but I can remember every single time. It went in oh, slow motion. God. The worst. I know. And you, I always, you subtly try and control the situation. And those, you're like, okay, so... I guess the guys over there will be skins. And so I guess <laughs> like it was all sort of part of some casual. It just makes much more sense. Yes, that's so friggin' accurate. How about Daniel getting such like an in to talk to the girl when there just happens to be a soccer ball nearby? You know, it's gym class or whatever it was. Like, and he gets the alley with an eye, gets the name. Alley with an eye, I feel like was like kind of a I feel like that was used a lot as a quote back in the day. I don't know why. Daniel with an L, like a smooth. You know, he nailed line. that. When he yeah, went yeah. back, he looked in the mirror. He's like, fucking A, Daniel with an L, I did it. He, he's just able to play like the New Jersey version of like the all American, like aw shucks kind of kid. Like he's sort of like stumbling into things, you know, like he he doesn't say I'm Daniel with an L. He says I'm Daniel uh, with an L. Like it's just all coming <laughs> yeah. 
And he's still got like a little chip on his shoulder. Like, you know, when he he'll start to like get angry with Miyagi later. And yeah, he's got like that Jersey edge to him still, which yeah. makes him just a unique character. It's not just that normal all American. You know, you know what he is? He's the bridge between Bruce and Bon Jovi. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's sort of the New Jersey the, uh, in between. It's a perfect way to put it. I always, by the way, very much landed on the Bon Jovi side of that. And much to the dismay of people as I got older, I didn't realize that that's, you know, people look at that as like, oh, so you don't have good taste. I, yeah, you know, it's funny. If forced at gunpoint, I don't know what who I'd pick between the two of them because I have to admit that Bon Jovi songs individually have brought me way more joy in my life than Bruce Springsteen songs. Like I, I like a handful of Bruce Springsteen songs and I like a handful of Bon Jovi songs, but I think the Bon Jovi songs are like a little more rocking. That was like tradition for me growing up in Jersey. He would play giant stadium once a year. We would take the whole family. My mom worked there. So she would get like a hookup on tickets. Like the whole family go see Bon Jovi in the in the rain in the heat didn't matter the weather I've gotten sunburned there I've gotten my clothes soaked there I've probably seen Bon Jovi nine times in my life Wow Wow yeah. Wow <laughs> Yeah Well see it's weird because I feel like I would have a way worse time with that experience Like I like to hear like you know when I'm driving on a summer day and they're like here's Bon Jovi with living on a prayer like that I'm all <laughs> into, like, pissed out the window but if I had to sit through like a two-hour concert with like the ballads and the new stuff I'd be like uh, the new stuff is what what really hurts you That's yeah what hurts you yeah because he knows he can get away with the new stuff because his fans worship him totally it, it's you know a lot of 50 year old moms in oh. leather oh he's got that market <laughs> I love that shot, by the way, right there of uh, the picture of him in the war. Yeah. He's got the gun. She's like, all right, this right. guy means business. Yeah. Yeah. He's holding an M60, not a 60, <laughs> like the Rambo kind of big. Okay. Obviously. So this is the Cobra Kai dojo, the bad guys. Yeah. He thinks he's going to go there to like join because he wants to fight that blonde guy on the beach, Johnny, only to discover, oh, that Johnny himself is in Cobra Kai. Have you uh, dove you into pupil. the Cobra Kai show at all? What's that? Have you watched the Cobra Kai show at all? You know, it's funny. I started to, and I just, I don't know. There's something like, just, I didn't, I, I think I would like it, but I, I could already kind of see the way it was developing and it was, it was bothering me, not because it was bad, but it was because like, I didn't want to put myself through it in a weird way. <laughs> <laughs> like I could see like, Oh, okay. Daniel's going to, with good intentions, teach the bad guy and Johnny's going to teach the, Oh, I don't, I don't, it's too much math for me. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm too afraid. By the way, this, this place is like, is on Wilshire Boulevard in LA Wilshire and Cloverdale, you can see the sign behind them. That's like two blocks from the Family Guy offices. Huh. This, this where they're sitting right now is currently a diner. And when it opened, I went in there and asked for the table by the window, so I, just so I could sit with this exact view. Did were they did they like kind of get it, or were they just like yeah sure? No, I don't think they had any idea. Yeah, um, but it's a good diner, Eleven City Diner. Shout out. That's a that's a great uh, commentary recommendation. Where else are you going to get that on a Karate Kid commentary? <laughs> yeah, a diner that's now in a shot from Karate Kid. And we talked about this last time you were on the show, but you're now relocated back in Massachusetts. Correct. How's how's like the Family Guy writing going now? Is is there still a large portion of the people in LA have a bunch of writers gone their separate ways, and now you get to do things via Zoom? Like, what's that like? Yeah, I, you know, I think that we're still figuring it out. Obviously, we don't have the green light to go back into the offices yet. We don't think that'll be till the fall, kind of, when everything... Because yeah. there are a lot of people in our office. It's like, you know, two to 300 people in this Jeez. office. Um, just for Family Guy or, like, in the whole building? Uh, no, just for Family Guy and... Yeah, Family Guy and American Dad, basically. Yeah, together. Right there. Wow, that's a that's a crazy amount of people. It's a lot. So is everyone yeah, like, under the same house, though, like animators, writers, e like everyone is in the same building. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yes, to answer the question, I think there there probably will be some remote component going forward to kind of like alleviate a little bit of that. But 
I think the goal is to at least be able to be back and with our friends and working together again. Interesting. I didn't know if you were like, fuck LA, I'm never going back ever <laughs> well, again. I mean, I think it's going to be a mixture of, of both. Yeah. You know, traveling sort of a PBD, little. It's like, I think that we did great work on zoom. It was very efficient. People got a lot done. So I think it's hard to argue with keeping a, a component like that. Yeah. This I'm is, good. Oh, this as, is a, as, a, as a little, you know, frail kid who experienced a fair share of bullying. Great bump by the, uh, I don't know if Ralph Macchio did that himself or if that was a stunt. No way. Stunt guy. No chance in hell. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it is kind of a weird eighties thing. It's like, Hey, there's that new kid we don't like. Let's try to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, don't throw me off a cliff. Yeah. Cause I come from a different state. <laughs> if, if Ralph Macchio were younger, let's say he were like 15, really playing a 15 year old in this movie and wanted to do a stunt like that himself, would they be legally allowed to let a kid do like take a fall like that? Oh, that's a good question. My, my, my instinct says no. It, it seems to me like you have to be a guy like Tom Cruise or something. True. Yeah, and make, it, make it like a virtue, a sales pitch, you know? My favorite ever uh, use of a stuntman in a movie is in uh, Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. It was Kiss's movie. They, oh, they, okay. they decided to get their own movie made. Right. It, it was just horrible. It was like they took the script for like a t made for TV movie that was like an hour long about these kids discovering that the the person behind this park is actually manufacturing like evil people. And it's like a Wizard of Oz type thing, man right. behind the curtain. That's but so they funny. Threw you, you, yeah, I'm sorry. And you shocked me when you said the Kiss movie was terrible. I was just. <laughs> <real>. <laughs> they so throw Kiss in. And Ace Freely was so like fucked up on drugs at the time that they couldn't get him to do all the scenes. So they had his stuntman do some of the scenes for him. <laughs> and his uh -huh. stuntman is a black guy. And it's very, I mean, he's wearing the face paint, but you, it, it's not hard to tell he's a black guy. I mean, they don't wear face paint on their neck, on their uh -huh. hands. Well, um, what are, and if, what are the... if you look it up, there's just some very funny scenes of like Ace Freely there. And then there's a black guy. And then there's Ace Freely. And then there's a black guy. What are the politics of a black guy in blackface? <laughs> like, how is that even, how could that be judged? It's like, a, it's almost like, I, yeah, I don't know. You just broke my know. brain with that. I, don't know, yeah. <laughs> I, I think we're probably a bad uh, jury to decide. Yeah, I think so probably too. <laughs> I just like to go over and look at the hot water. I don't like to get in it. <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, so this is now he's showing them. Okay, this is where they tried to kill me. Oh, and also, <laughs> also, this is the weird friend who was all in a lot of 80s movies, just this character type who doesn't like the new boy either. Like, she's very against Daniel on the left. You're just like, too good just for him. Kids. Yeah, it's not, it doesn't even get to the level of you're just too good for him. It's more like it's sort of a very crude, like, he's slime. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the makeup artist on this movie. His yeah. black guy before and this both look great. And sometimes yeah. you see like nowadays, even in shows like a black guy where you're like, yikes. I know. I know. It's a, it's a tough thing to get right, but they got it. They nailed it. Yet another reason this movie's climbing its way, checking off all the boxes. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's just everything came together for you. Yep. And this outfit that, that Daniel's wearing here. What was he thinking? Camo <laughs> pants, plaid shirt baseball shirt under it let me tell you what if you want a better shirt you go to our friends at bare bottom clothing bare bottom has everything you need and you can help match yourself because it's all like plain clothing listen i'm no fashionista myself i'm able to take a bunch of bare bottom clothes out of my drawer put it together and it looks like an outfit where it's like oh robbie i like what you're wearing today I'm like oh thank you the return to travels here before you part uh, start packing for your next adventure don't forget to check out bare bottom you use our promo code which is basement b-a-s-e-m-e-n-t um, and you will get free shipping on your first order go to barebottomclothing.com that's bear like the animal bottomclothing.com right now use the promo code basement you'll get free shipping on your first order and you'll save money because this stuff with the free shipping everything like that it's much cheaper than the uh the stuff that it looks like the fashion stuff 
All right, back to the movie and a great scene to get back to. Oh yeah, this is where we first see the bonsai tree. And this, of course, the bonsai tree, I think travels through all three movies in some way, shape or form. Does it? I mean, not the same one, but just the bonsai tree. The idea tree. of it, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever of... seen three in my life. Is, uh, is Machio in it? Yeah, three's bad, but it, but it's like, it's bad, but he's still in it and he's still decent. So it's like, I don't know. I, I, I'd recommend watching it at some point, but yeah. it, has, it has one of those insane bad guys, which I kind of hated. I've definitely, one and two were like, I watched constantly growing up. I think Clem, you were right about, at least I remember watching Karate Kid 2 on cable, like all the time, like Karate Kid 2, which is always be on cable. Yep. Um, and I'm a little bit embarrassed to say that I saw the Jaden Smith Karate Kid on release day uh -huh. and I was really excited about it. And I left the theater as a, what was that? 2010, I think before the summer. So I was 11. I oh. left that theater and I was just like, that was incredible. <laughs> I loved it. Uh, I have seen it since. I retract that statement. My yeah, year old Robbie. It, hey, was, were, it wasn't you incredible. Were excited. You were yeah, excited. I, I was excited. They did the backflip kick at the end instead of the crane kick. I was just like, oh, my God. The yeah. theater, I remember, really cheered at the end of it. Like, I re like the theater I was in loved it. So that right. added to the enjoyment of it. I was like, yeah. I was, it was like I was at the karate tournament. Oh, you know. Sometimes you get that experience in a theater where a movie's like, you're kind of amazed that everybody's going nuts, but by the end, you're like, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> I think it, we talk about this all the time. Infinity War is in my top five, it may probably top three movie theater experiences. Absolutely. The world landing back on Wakanda. Like the greatest moment. Great. The place, <laughs> where, the place exploded. That was so awesome. And to, just to think that you would ever be that psyched to see Thor, Rocket, and Groot together. It was like crazy. Exactly. Oh. By the way, shout out to Clem for making this a 4D commentary experience. <laughs> As we are working on some of the greens in the movie, it sounds like he's got some people working on his bushes outside. Yeah, we got a deck getting done and some some stuff being blown away. So, yeah, a little moving a the bonsai trim. Get, getting a nicer deck for the summer? Just getting uh, fixed up. It was a little banged up. So I, I I painted it myself five years ago. As you can imagine, didn't last quite full five years. So now uh, we're going to have the professionals handle this one. It's not well, it's good for you. I love a good uh, good deck hang on in the summer. Oh, sounds yeah. Like yes. a, sounds like I'm about to say dick hang. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were doing some pun there. Um, what are you drinking? Schweppes or Mountain Dew? Oh, no, or... come on. This is Canada Dry. The best Canada of the bits. Dry. Okay. Hey. Schweppes. To this, poor. to this Jew, any ginger ale is fine. <laughs> Anything you have, any ginger ale. No, yeah, I'm a Canada dry, or else like sometimes the uh store I go to like restocks with Schweppes or, or a different one. Um what's the other one? Seagrams. Sometimes they'll restock with one of them, and I won't even buy it then. <laughs> we used to have uh, at our school infirmary, they had Shasta ginger ale and like oh, it's a tiny the tiny cans. Kind of I don't think I've ever heard of that. Cool treat. I remember Shasta uh, in school, and I think some hospitals still randomly have it. It's the only place yeah. I've heard of it is still is hospital. It's made totally. its way to I don't know why it's in the medical world so <laughs> often. They probably Reagan probably categorized it as like medicinal at some point for like a <laughs> some kind of tax loophole. <laughs> Reagan famously made uh, ketchup a vegetable. So he really, could, it could fill some school requirement that the kids had more vegetables in their lunch at school lunches. So he categorized uh, uh, ketchup as a vegetable. What a move! Michelle right. Obama cate categorized cookies as some kind of you know unhealthy thing, and they took them away in my high school. So I always was kind of upset about that. Oh boy! But that's the way you. You know what? That's how the insurrection starts. <laughs> <laughs> when they when they start taking cookies away, someday those people are adults and they're they were angry. fifty cent cookies. They were great, but yeah, they took them away. I've since bought cookies uh, that I, I found are the exact same ones they used to make in my high school, and I know where to buy them now. So I'm like, all right, I can still get that's, the fifty cent cookies. It's great. That's the best. I Little just Halloween um, 
Yeah, by the We're way, getting yeah. ready for Halloween in the movie. Is he yep. drinking a Canada Dry in a movie? Oh, no, that's got to be like a Sprite. It's a bigger. It's a Shasta. <laughs> <laughs> Could be I just in... looked. Yeah, go ahead. I just looked up the jersey. I was like, I got to get that jersey. And I was wondering, I didn't know if it was like Kellen Winslow or whatever. It is Wes Chandler of the San Diego Chargers. That nice. is that's a solid jersey. You bring that up. And is he speaking, a famous player? He was, doesn't seem like, he was all right. Yeah. Not like a legend or anything. Number three pick, I think I read. Yeah, third pick overall. She says something ridiculous here about him. Watch what this girl says. Oh, yeah, she must be into fungus. Oh. <laughs> like, I don't know why she's into him. She must be into fungus. What an 80s put down. Yeah, what a I, burn. That's like, I could imagine like DJ saying that on Full House. <laughs> yeah, I know. And by the way, this is maybe like people are going to be like, Jesus, smoke more weed turtle. But when I look at this Halloween costume, I'm like, oh, my God, in the era of weed vape pens, what a costume this is. I would just be getting stoned in the little shower all night. <laughs> oh, that's great. It, there, it's a problem getting around parties. And also when people get drunk, they're going to want to start fucking with you in there. They're going to start basketball. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's so room, true. Garbage. And garbage. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I know three of my friends who would just be throwing like, you know, what three quarter empty cans in there? <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> Just like you taking a shower in there, dude. And you know that the teachers would immediately be like, "What are you doing in there?" I know. <laughs> yep. It's an all-time great costume. All-time great costume. Really good. Really. And shout out to like mothers from New Jersey that make homemade costumes. My mom always made homemade costumes for my siblings growing up. By the time she got to me, she was like, fuck it. You could buy one. Nice. I, my, my buddy was this. He, 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 he did. He made this costume or he bought it or something like that. He had the whole like bath costume. It was pretty Oh, sweet. really? Yeah. And I think, like you said, people were throwing shit into there by the end of the night. It was college. So it was yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, And the, the that villain part. costumes that we're about to run into are iconic. Oh, yeah. great. As great. iconic as it gets. Same yeah. friend was the skull one year, too. <laughs> Big oh, karate really? kid guy looking back. <laughs> Big karate kid guy. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it feels like a movie version of Halloween. Like too many people are going all out with their costumes. Like they're too perfect. And too many people are sticking to the Halloween theme. You know, know, a lot of times people just go with pop culture nowadays. I don't know how it was in the 80s. Maybe it was that way. I have a a nephew, Luke, who for his first few years was just like adamant that he stuck to the Halloween theme. We were like, hey, you're a big like Thomas the Train fan. Do you want to be Thomas the Train? He was like, no, pumpkin. We're like, all right, (laughs) fuck it. The next year we were like, you know, do you want to be Mario? You're super into Mario. He was like, nope, a bat. We were like, all right, you know what? This kid loves Halloween. We respect it. Yep. He's a purist. Yeah. (laughs) And also, this is another 80s trope of like the evil bad kids are smoking weed. (laughs) You know, I noticed this last night. It was the first time I ever noticed that he's like rolling a joint in there. Yeah. And they say something. There's a line about it. He's like, you know, are you rolling it up or something like that? I love that. You know, he throws the headphones on and he wouldn't notice the massive shower curtain coming over him. <laughs> no nope. great plan by Ralph, though. I know. Great. By the way, if he hadn't been held up by that Spider Man, he would have made it. I think about that a lot because, like, he but he he almost makes it. Yeah, you're right. And if he hadn't got tangled <laughs> with uh, with uh, Miles Morales there, he would have made it. <laughs> <laughs> that does look like the the suit Miles buys from the Stan Lee costume. That's right. The costume shop, yeah. Did did either of you guys ever do group costume with your friends? I feel like yes, but I, uh, I can't remember. I was always my my enthusiasm for Halloween kind of waned after the age of like ten. I would say, yeah. I'm trying to think, I don't. My wife and I we do a lot of couples costumes. We did like um, the key master and the. Uh, Gatekeeper, yep. Finkel and Einhorn. So we, we do a lot of like pop culture couple things like that as we got older. But um, oh no, cancel Ace Ventura, cancel it. That's it true. Yeah, that doesn't it. make it today, unfortunately. I <laughs> yeah, I read an article about how Ace Ventura needs to be canceled because of that ending, and I was like, sorry, can't put those laughs back in my mouth. <laughs> like, I, and it's not even necessarily about the ending. That was yeah, that was dumb and fine. Get rid of it. But Jim Carrey. An absolute inspired performance. I love both of those movies. I know people don't like the second one as much, but like there's some moments in the second movie that are my favorite in either. 
he's he's just on fire in those movies. It's the great. slinky, the slinky scene is so goddamn funny. <laughs> yeah. When I left when I left Ace Ventura to the theater, I was like legitimately disappointed because I love one so much. But the Rhino scene and the Monopoly Man scene, yeah. they they fit right in with the first one. And the first yeah. one is an all timer in my book. So yeah, it's so funny. Yeah, I was like 21 when that came out, and I was like laughing uncontrollably. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pick on the guys all dressed as skeletons right now. I'm yeah. going to get back in my vengeance who they almost killed me by uh, destroying their, their joint, and let's see what happens. Well, this is a big part in the movie here because we didn't know this. We did not yeah. know that Miyagi could do this, so this is very exciting. And then, of course, the last boss he has to face. Oh, quick work. Did he hit him Incredible. with a triple ball shot? Was that a triple ball shot on the second or last guy? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, or maybe like an inside leg kick and then ball shot. Oh. I could see that as the family guy, uh, like uh, a, a gag where it's like this one guy always just gets kicking the balls. No matter what, he just like four times in a row. Bing, bing, bing. bing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're going to need to do a retake on that. Again, four <laughs> quick successive chops to his groin. By the way, as I was uh, preparing to do this commentary, I did a little research. I found this very interesting. Mr. Miyagi here is 51 years old in real life. Ralph wow. Macchio is currently 59 years old. Wow. Oh. Wow. That's kind of weird to think about, ain't it? Well, it's, what's weird for me is that now I'm three years away from Miyagi age. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's Dude, crazy. in in three years, let's write a parody to this where it's you teaching me how to like write in some way, and in three right. years we'll shoot it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh God! Every time I remember that Back to the Future's future was six years ago. Now at this point, it just sadness just overtakes my body. <laughs> I know. One was Blade Runner's future too. Was it? It's coming up. Yeah. Yeah, it's like twenty twenty three or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's Shit all is weird to think about. It's all nuts. He thought it was Spider Man who bailed him out. He thought it I was know. Miles, and Spider Man ended up being the one who, like you said, kind of <laughs> lampooned him. Yeah, you know what? There was a subtle through line there that we all missed with that Spider Man guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a story within a story. He's right, one but... of he's one of the many in in that Spider Verse. You could we could That's write right. a comic about that guy. That's right. <laughs> Uh, all right, he's he's getting up now. So Mr. Miyagi helped him. Again, look at the new bruise on his cheek. It looks great. Fresh. <laughs> looks real. Yep. Yeah. I wonder who their uh, makeup... Not that I would ever recognize any name. Tell you what. Yeah, so Miyagi had a great father who taught him a lot. And by the way, the idiot that I am, and this is, of course, the racist American view of the world. When I heard about, oh, he was from Okinawa, I was like, oh, it's awesome. They made up some fake place that he's from. Like, it's like <laughs> a fictitious story. Like, I had, I did not know that Okinawa was like a real place. Yeah. I think I, I think that lasted through Karate Kid, too. I'm like, they're going to Okinawa. <laughs> they made that place. Magical land. That's so funny. And you kind of get that with Daniel here. Like he kind of gets to learn about the culture a little bit. You know, when he asked about the father, I thought your father was a fisherman. He's like, no, everyone knows, you know, yep. karate and fish. Right. He's getting a sense of Okinawa. So I'm looking up the makeup artist here. Death Becomes Her. I mean, that, that movie required some serious oh. makeup. He crushed yeah. that. Uh, the name, by the way, uh, E. Thomas Case. R.I.P. Died in 2007. Oh, damn. Um, well, I hope he got some. Uh, I hope he got some respect before he died as well. We're doing tons it of movies, posthumously. Tons of movies. But yeah, you could, posthumously. Is that how you say it? Yeah, I'm an yeah. idiot. No, that's all right. You're 22. <laughs> You're 22. <laughs> Started off Creature from the Black Lagoon, and then he was in. That's 54, and he was in a ton of stuff. But nothing. I uh, guess Death Becomes Her. The biggest thing. I um, love that line from Miyagi right there. That's Yoda esque. Karate for defense only. Yeah. That's how a Jedi uses the force, right? Oh, defense he's such, or knowledge. He's such a Jedi master in this movie. He is. Yeah. 
They should they should base the next you know whatever next spin off Star Wars movie base the Jedi Master on Miyagi. Oh, that make him be- make him like a samurai master, you know. Make him a mixture of Miyagi and um, what's his name from Kill Bill Volume Two um, that Tarantino does the voice for, uh, with the white 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 beard. Oh yeah 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 yeah. I remember that guy. Like a mixture of those two characters. Yeah, well, actually. We got that great guy in Rogue One, remember? Yeah. Yeah. He was sort of had a similar vibe. I am one with the Force and the Force is with me. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. Awesome. What an awesome movie that was. Yeah. Might be the second best Star Wars movie ever, maybe. Wow. Are you that high on it? I loved it. We've and talked about it before. I remember you you like made Seth sit down and watch that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I remember you saying that. Yeah. And he liked it. Of course, he had a, a, a Seth note, which was accurate and a very Seth style note where he was like, it's like, you really miss that John Williams music. <laughs> yeah, OK, you're right. John Williams may have, my brother always says, uh, the most impressive career in the history of cinema. I totally agree. When you look at the resume. Absolutely. Because he's, Yeah. All the stuff he's been involved with. Yep. Could not argue with that. And he's really, like, we talk about film composers, the GOAT. There's not really a discussion around that, right? He's, like, the name that comes up. And then you can bring up Bill Conti. You can bring up Danny Elfman. But, like, when you you put all their careers next to each other, it's, like, one is 80 movies long, and then the other two are there. Well, there's... It's funny. There's definitely no contemporary competitor. People bring up the name of... uh, What's his name? It's like Paul Eric. Zimmer. No, it's like Eric Korngold or something. And he was from like he did whoever did like all the Errol Flynn Robin Hood movies and a bunch of stuff oh. back in the day. And and it's funny because they play a lot of it side by side with Williams music. And you can see that John Williams was clearly a big fan of this guy because uh, like a lot of the stuff is almost sampled. But yeah, it, I think John Williams takes it. I think John Williams is in a league with like Mozart and Beethoven. I mean, yeah. In terms of like writing that kind of music. Also, can we talk about, you're kind of like a sick musician. Not at all. Terrible. You post videos all the time on Instagram though, where I'm like, this guy really knows how to play piano. Well, I, I have a, a lower intermediate, level of uh playing piano where i, I think can, i think you're being humble i think you're you know, a pretty good piano player i can pound chords uh for like sing-alongs that's but more than most pe- people can do. literally I, if i play through piano man once just pounding the chords my hands are all claw like i never practice <laughs> it's all it's all it's for all the good. instagram videos it's like it's like annoying people who can kind of play the guitar and they always play the same six songs like i'm that way on the piano that's I'm it. that guy. I'm that guy with bass. So I'm yeah. with you. Yo, all those great bass songs that you like to sit around. Oh, and sing. oh shut up! No <laughs> hey, bass slander sit around this camp- in my basement. No everybody. bass slander. <laughs> sit around the campfire. Do, do, yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> you ever hear the, the age old like how do you clear room? You play bass solo. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a it's a cool instrument. Believe me. That, that's a, also a thing. And people say, how do you get homeless people off the street? Put a bass player out there. <laughs> oh, if, if only it were that simple. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be out there slapping a bass like all the time. So this scene is okay. You see a little bit of the cruelty of the Cobra Kai dojo in this scene where the, the crease, uh, the sensei orders and like hit him again. Boink. No empathy. Nope. And that, of course, is Bobby, uh, who ultimately becomes a conflicted Cobra Kai member. <laughs> what tat are we rocking on the arm there? Is that a heart or a grenade or a grenade that's poses a heart? I can't really tell. We're going to have to get a better look at it because that is some important research. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, they said, come on, let's get it. Let's forget this. That poster is a sweet poster of the tournament, too. That's oh, awesome. Great. I was thinking that. As soon as I saw that, I was like, that's kind of badass. You guys got to try and use that for uh, Rough and Rowdy. Oh, oh wow. 
That's such a great call. By the way, just before we started recording this, it's public. It's on Twitter. Pac-Man Jones called out the rough and rowdy heavyweight champ. Unbelievable. Love it. I think Tom Segura has a joke about Pac-Man Jones. I feel uncomfortable repeating it now that uh, I might be in his presence. But he's like, if you want to know anything about Pac-Man Jones, he went into a strip club and people wound up shot twice. (laughs) (laughs) God. I sent uh, Alec the Gary Goleman bit about the Karate Kid before this, and if you guys have never heard it or if you've never seen it, I really recommend checking it out. Gary Goleman, I think, is one of the funniest comedians out there right now. I think his special from a few years ago, The Great Depression, was like just spectacular. One of my favorite stand-up specials I've ever seen. Got to watch his Karate Kid bit because it's so, so funny. funny. It was really funny. The stuff about Pat Maria <laughs> was so yeah. funny that like – his name is Noriyuki Pat Morita, and somehow mm-hmm. Pat is the nick, like the sort of nickname for Noriyuki. <laughs> yeah, like you might get Bob from Robert. Yep, exactly. <laughs> it's it's you know, right it's down funny. there. It's so funny. All right, so now we're the plot's picking up here because now Mr. Miyagi has just said Daniel's going to fight in this tournament. Like, don't don't beat him up until then, and you'll settle this like men in the tournament. And we get a, a pushy little bastard comment. Yeah, you're pushy little bastard. Pushy little bastard. Ooh, Ooh that doesn't feel good. None of those words feel good. I think we missed it. We did. Yeah, it just it just happened. I want to get a clear look at that uh at that tattoo. Fifty one. I, st- I still can't believe that like Daniel goes, thanks for nothing to Miyagi, who fixed his bike and saved his life so far in this movie. I just can't get over that. It's such it's it's like the young kid. We all say stupid stuff when we're kids, but damn Daniel. Oh, I just said an old <laughs> damn meme. Daniel. I just said no, an old meme. That was tough. the meme, was- yeah. <laughs> I can't believe this. I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're right on Wilshire again. You know how Trent said that, what was it, Elf was the prequel to Step Brothers? Yeah. I almost want this to be the prequel to My Cousin Vinny, where it's just the same character. He you know, goes about his life, and then he ends up getting arrested and was right. out of fucking Bama. <laughs> I, I don't know. My Cousin Vinny. I, I, it's, it's, not, it's pretty to say it's underrated. I, it's, it's perfectly rated, but anyone that knows it and loves it, I mean, I just love that movie. I feel like that should be – Talked about Bob. Have you seen that? I have. It was actually Grandma Fox's favorite movie ever. Rest in peace. It was one that she sat me down and watched uh, when I was way too young to watch it. Like way, (laughs) way too young. And then when she passed away, I watched it just kind of like you know, like I. It was recently after she passed. I was like, man, I don't want to watch Grandma's favorite movie, kind of to remember her. And I found it so goddamn funny. And I was like, the fact that she showed this to probably like a seven year old at the time. It was like yeah. preposterous because I didn't even understand what was going on. I think the only thing I remember from watching it the first time is like the train constantly passing the apartment and like them waking up from it or whatever. But right. man, watching it as an adult, what a movie. And I love me some Joe Pesci. Anytime you give me Pesci, I'm in. <laughs> it's a good movie. It's it's a fun movie. Like there's that word again. It's a fun <laughs> movie. No, I, I, I really did enjoy it. I saw it, enjoyed it, and probably haven't thought about it since. But I, I did like the interplay between Joe Pesci and Fred Gwynn, who played the judge, who was uh, Herman Munster from the, the Munsters. By the way, I have confirmation on what the tattoo is. I have uh, close-ups of like action figures where they've printed it on him. It's a uh, hand holding a grenade. Oh. so badass. I don't know if you can see it. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Nice. So that must be from his war days you know yeah is great that... car here that never gets mentioned when you talk about great movie cars right but yeah kind of a cool one and, and so important cool. to the plot of the movie important to the trust between miyagi and daniel uh, and, and also like it helps that he he cleans the shit out of it so like when it's riding around you're like oh that's that's fresh that yeah. car is fresh and clean by the time he takes it out on the night that's right <laughs> I was reading that he still has the car, Machio. Machio got it as like a gift when it was all over, and he still has it. Wow. wow. Yeah. 
That's awesome. Talk about a piece of movie memorabilia. We yep. pose that question all the time. What piece of mo movie memorabilia would you like? If you are Ralph Macchio and you are the Karate Kid, that's probably what you fucking want. Yeah, not that screw the trophy from the tournament. You want no. that? No. Yeah. Okay. I wonder, wonder where that headband is right now. Do they have that <laughs> in a museum somewhere? Does Macchio have that? Is it in one of those Raiders of the Lost Ark style storage <laughs> units? <Yeah. laughs> They hide memorabilia from 80s movies. <laughs> <laughs> Man, if a place like that exists, it would be my dreamland. I would want to get locked well, in there like the way, Peter Parker and Homecoming. It, it does. A place like that exists. It's at the Lucas Ranch where they have all the <laughs> Star Wars stuff. And somebody, I've been there, you know, with my... Uh, no big deal, yeah. My, my buddy, George, Georgie. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, there is a room and literally there, a lot of them are in that exact style boxes and it's like a huge warehouse and you go through and you see, oh, here's this model of the Millennium Falcon and here are these, uh, you know, Tauntauns and here's... The, it was awesome. That's... I need to start manifesting a video tour of that place for barstool because they talk about a dream it was awesome it was i don't know i guess it's all still there of course it is i uh, did you see the uh seth rogan interview he recently did about meeting spielberg and lucas together no it was hysterical. I think it was on Stern, and he said uh, he had a meeting with him and uh, Evan Goldberg, right, is his partner, right. Bloom, one, one of those. They had a meeting with Spielberg, and Spielberg walked in with George Lucas, like unannounced, didn't know he was going to be there, and they were just like, oh, my God, are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? George Lucas and Steven Spielberg walking in right now. Steven Spielberg almost immediately takes a call and leaves the room, and he said this was in 2011 the meeting happened. Right. So they kind of like – just made like small talk with George and they were like, Hey man, like, how are you? And they said, George's response was not good. It's about to be 2012, which means the world is coming to an end. And it was like very serious about believing in the 2012, like, you know, the oh whatever, December God. 21st or 12th, whatever it was. Yeah. The Mayan calendar. Yes. Yeah. And they said he had like, they, I think he said that George had a spaceship, but he was like, you can't. And they're like, Oh, can we come on it? And he was like, no. Like very seriously, like <laughs> oh no, yeah, that's awful. Yeah, so unfortunately, you know, maybe not a great experience for him, but it made for a great story in his book. Jeez. Yeah, that's true. Jesus, wow, creepy. Excited you... to read that. I'm, I'm hearing that Seth Rogen's book is is very funny, which isn't surprising. Not surprising. Not as surprising as those photos of him without his glasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's heavily bandaged the whole movie here. <laughs> he is. He's just getting beat the hell up I for know. wrestling fans. He's like the Brooklyn Brawler. He comes out every week, and he <laughs> loses every week, but you still love him. <laughs> Great callback. Oh, here they are. The giant 80s sling as well that just looks like it was made <laughs> out of like a big T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like a pillowcase. Yep. Oh, no, he, he delivers a clap. Look, this line must be take a worm for a walk week. That's what he, <laughs> that's what he yells after him. Got him. Oh, got him on the way out. That's nice. I'm stealing that. <laughs> yeah. Next time I really want to piss someone off, hit him with that one. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine if it actually had been take a worm for a walk week? <laughs> double, double burn. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's always the worst kind of joke when, when you have to invent something that doesn't exist. To like make the joke work. Yeah. Like a friend of ours in the family guy room, this writer, Tom Devani, he's so funny. He has a very distinctive way of talking. And he's like, wanted to tell us a joke one day, one day. And he was like, he was like, a guy walks in. Uh, uh, oh no. Before the bit, he goes, uh, now for this bit to work, you have to make the buy that there are things called clans. So it was like, he was going to do a joke about a Klondike bar, clearly. <laughs> How can you make up this weird fake thing for your joke? This is a great uh, strategic move from Daniel right here. You know, we talk in a lot of, in covering MMA, we talk about the fight IQ, your brilliance when you're actually in the cage. Yeah. This is fight IQ building right here. This is, oh, my bullies right there. Let me grab the principal. Let me say, hey, uh. How are you? Whatever. What are you doing here? Whatever. What do you ever says to him? Exactly. It's a good just, move. 
getting a pick in front of him, him, and, him and the bully. The Batman smoke screen out of the belt. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is the date. Okay, the big date. Okay, fancy. She's fancy. Yep. That's very 80s fancy. Mercedes in the driveway. He's in the family wagon. Yep. Oof. It's just Here, if you guys mm-hmm. have, have station wagons in the family, we had one that uh, my family got rid of like just as I was born. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, we didn't have station wagons, but I wasn't like a carpool service for school that was all a wooded station wagon. The wooden ones, I think, are maybe the ugliest cars ever made. <laughs> we had like the we had like the wooden minivan, like you know, like the fake wood wood siding <laughs> yeah. on the minivan. We didn't have the, so the, ugly. But whenever you got to go in someone else's station wagon, they had the seats that were in the back. You could look out the back, which were horrendously dangerous for children to be sitting in at any point. Oh. It's hilarious that they actually built them like that, right? I know. Oh, you just they had seats that like faced the back. You're saying? Yeah, yeah. And like the trunk, yeah. Yep. Holy shit! Yeah, I never like knew a- that. It was like a bench in the back that faced the back window. That's ridiculous. I know. I know. It was so dangerous. And I remember our bus driver like speeding up over things, you know, when we were just to like give us all that thrill <laughs> of kind of going. <laughs> he was later arrested for uh, drug dealing. Oh, wow. Your yeah. bus driver? Yep. Our station wagon driver. He used to take us to like this candy store on the way to school or on the way back usually and he would be like you, you guys can get anything you want at veronica's the store is called veronica's like just you know go ahead and go in veronica's i'll be right back and he was doing drug deals in the alley behind it oh my we had no idea nice that's yep. very auto from the simpsons right there right yeah mm-hmm. it is <laughs> yeah it really is is Otto yeah, still alive? Did he get killed off? I feel, you know, there's so many Simpsons characters who got killed off over the years. I wonder if Otto's still breathing. I don't know. I have no idea. Don't talk about the Simpsons. Fuck the Simpsons. Yeah. We're a family uh, guy podcast. I love, no, the I love the Simpsons. I love the Simpsons. We all love the Simpsons. Yeah, how could you not? Uh, okay, so this is embarrassing. The car won't start. Oh, right and the rich the pretty parents, parents. I know. Oh, embarrassing okay. for the mom, too. Oh. I can't believe I have to watch this in my tennis outfit. I was watching The Simpsons the other day. It's the episode where Mr. Burns is trying to kill Papa Simpson um, over the uh, the treasure. The treasure when they're all part of that like Navy. Hellfish. Yes, the Hellfish. Yes. Oh, so funny. So goddamn funny. I know. Well, Mr. Burns is a home run. He's awesome. Yeah, Burns is great. What a great playland this is. It's so California, too. Golf and stuff. Yeah, it's great. That's kind right, of my so, like, goal in life is to just own a mini golf course. Like that's my retirement plan. Just own a mini golf. Nothing like this. This is way too much work. Uh, like uh, that's a beautiful retirement plan. I right? know. I could picture Great. you as the guy at the front desk, desk, just being like, "What color ball do you want, sweetie?" Yeah. Kid? I have like the same like five jokes that I recycle to like all the kids and yeah, you know, laugh oh, and like, wow. all right, old man, give me the, give me the stick and get out of my face. I kind of picture you more as you know the. Carl Spangler, or Bill Murray from Caddyshack, moving the moving the holes around and staring at the <laughs> women coming in. I picture Clem to be the kind of guy where it's the 18th hole is one of those where it like sucks your ball in and you don't get it back, but if you miss, he's like, ah, take another shot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Throws him. <laughs> oh, big move. Hand holding. Oh, meshed, meshed fingers. That was a cool shot. By the way, the just the shot of like where you couldn't see them, you could only see their hands. I'm telling you, this director doesn't get enough credit. Abelson, John Abelson, he nailed this movie. Yeah, that was really cool. All right, so question for you, Alec. That I, I texted yeah. you last night and I said I've been holding back questions to text sure. you that I just thought of because I was like, I'll save it for the pot. It'll be interesting to just awesome. ask. Awesome. Do you have a billion this is as a question as not only a writer but as a stoner do you have a billion concepts for movies tv shows anything in your mind that you're just like eh, maybe one day i'll get to it like do you have just a, a pool of a hundred ideas that you want to jump into well we cut from a billion to a hundred which i'm glad of <laughs> um but no no i would say not even close to a hundred not even 10 i would say i have you know like maybe three or four things that 
if and when, you know, someday when family guy's over and if I am wanting to do more stuff, needing to do more stuff, there are a few ideas that I'd like to visit, but I'm, I'm pretty lazy. Like I'm not like <laughs> one of those stoners who's like, I'm a stoner, like just so I can say it, like it's legit. I'm lazy. And like, I've, you know, I'm, I've softly stomped, grape stomped a lot of my brain cells over the years. <laughs> and so I, my, you know, I love what I do now. I get to sit there and be like a wise ass and, you know, it, it, in, in something that already exists, it's like such a perfect mix uh, mesh for me right now. I but, asked that because I, I heard musicians talking about it recently. It was Chris Stapleton, I think, was doing an interview, and he talks about how he has, like, at all times, he's like, I literally have thousands of songs in the vault that I just yeah. sit there and I record songs, and I sometimes I never plan on doing anything with them. Sometimes they're like, you know, it's just a guitar part that I put down, but uh, he's just constantly working. I was like, I wonder if that applies to not only music, but TV. I'm sure for some people it does. Uh, for me, I don't think it would. Yeah, no, I'm the anti-Stapleton in that regard. But I definitely, you know, I still like to think of comedy things all, all the time on this podcast. We're starting. I do this. We have this segment, me and my buddy Goldie, called Johnny Jokes, where we just look at the day's news and write Johnny Carson style jokes for it. And, and mm -hmm. anyone who knows the Carson style, it's like you know, you, you, you can end the punchline on like, you know, saying like he, you know, he tried schnitzel in Fiji. Like it's just, <laughs> it just has to sound funny. So it's, it's like, I, I occupy my mind with shit like that way more than I should. Cause that won't get me anything or get, you know, nobody cares about that style anymore, but I like to throw my comedic brain into something like that. I suppose for like family guy, it, you, you could it's so versatile what you could use in, in jokes right like from cutaways to like even just the characters referencing pop culture like you don't ha it's not like oh that would be a great joke but it doesn't work for the project like i would assume most of the jokes you write you could make work for a, a certain character yeah i mean if if you think of something funny enough uh we can usually find a way to to get it in there but we do try to patrol like with cutaways and stuff like how randomly we get into them let's just say you remember the south park episode where they make fun of family guys like being written by <laughs> yeah. that, like, pick you know random balls well that had a profound effect on set <laughs> and so really yeah like really? he he agreed with that and it, and it pissed him off later after that when we would write cutaways and he would think in his mind like oh like the south park guys were right like this cutaway it's just so random and such a left turn. Like it, it doesn't make sense. So he makes us kind of watch how we set up our cutaways to make sure that the, it feels like it exists in that moment somehow. Like that character would set up that cutaway that way. It's not just us inserting something we think is funny. Holding you back from just making Beatles jokes in every episode. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I no, that's that's really interesting that like he he took that as like constructive criticism, I guess, in a way that like that joke. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think that he saw the truth in that and he didn't he didn't like that when he saw it in, in the show, especially afterwards. Uh, so he you know, when he does records and, and he's recording his his different lines and setups and cutaways and things, he'll he'll he's not shy about pointing out like still makes notes for you guys yeah yeah he'll still say or sometimes he doesn't say anything you just you're keeping track of the lines he's reading and then like you get to a setup and there's a pause and then all you hear is like the crumpling of paper and then, <laughs> and then he oh, moves, on to the, moves on to the next thing and you're like okay i guess we're fixing that yeah I yeah. feel like Family Guy's in such a good groove, though. Like, I, I texted you, like, almost, I feel like, every week of the last season when it would hit Hulu because every right. episode I thought was so funny. And I love – and it was something that you said that Seth doesn't love, but some of the fourth wall breaks in the last season of Family Guy were so funny to me. Yeah. And so, like, self-referential. And Family right. Guy is in such a good place right now, I think. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we uh, – it was really fun this season. And, and I – myself was you know obviously tivoing and watching them when they would come out on sunday i watched them the next day but like I, I often found myself like 
Oh, that was a good one. There were a couple where I was like, I'm glad that one's over and I'll never watch it again. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's been fun. And the fourth wall stuff, he's not against us doing it, um, but it just, it's like, we can't rely on it. Yeah. You know, I think we were coming to kind of use it as a crutch if we didn't know how to get out of a scene or end an act or something, we'd break the fourth wall. And so we just have to be a little more judicious about how we dole that out. One of the so, all-time uh, Family Guy fourth wall breaks is the entire episode where you had them do this. You had them do a commentary over right. a Family Guy episode, which I thought was so funny. Oh God! That well, that was a that episode was a huge headache just be, for the reasons you'd think. It was just logistically really hard to kind of sync up the fake commentary track with the fake episode that was going on underneath and like the fake episode had to have enough like comedy and story in it to kind of seem like it was real and then it was that was very complicated i could imagine yeah iconic so, scene just happened in the movie by the way of, of catching the fly with the chopsticks yes as i watched that last night i was like how the fuck did they do that how, how like what what was that special effect? Because you could see the fly in frame and then it's, you clearly can't see it anymore. Once he grabs it with the chopsticks. I think if uh, I could be wrong, but I think if you read the IMDB trivia about the movie, I think they mentioned that. And I think that it was on a string. Uh. Yeah. And there was some, you know, it was, it was fudged in some way, but it, it did look good. Let me see if I could pull it up as we're watching him paint this fence here. Another one of the main lessons that he doesn't yeah. realize he's learning right now. Not at all. And he's really being, you know, he's really being put to work here. So he's, what has he done? He's sanded the floor. He's washed Wash the car. cars. Interestingly enough, Pat Morita himself designed the bonsai logo so sewed onto the back of Daniel's gi. D didn't know that. That's a very, very interesting fact about it. That's great. No idea. He's only 51, folks. Just I, 51. Can't, I can't unsee Yoda and Luke right now. You guys have really fucked <laughs> up. I know. I know. Well, it's. I'm sure they based it on that. Yeah. That would be a cool piece of uh, artwork to get commissioned. Like, mm. you know, sort of uh, them sitting by a bonsai tree like that fr was framed right there. And Luke has that headband on with maybe a rebel logo in the middle of it oh that's good i've good. been thinking I'm, I'm i'm about to move apartments in july i'm about to move to jersey city and i want to get a piece and i was like is this like cringeworthy in the stoner way but almost like you know how banksy does that uh graffiti stencil style i want to get that of an ewok handing a scout trooper a joint and just kind of like a, a friendship peace and love thing and i was like eh, that might be too cringeworthy yeah, I'd hold off on that. Yeah, it might be, <laughs> might be one of those tiny ones for the desk. I, you know what it is? It's funny if if you had suggested that, like, not not at your age then, but like for if I had heard about that fifteen years ago, I would have been like, <laughs> yeah. "That's awesome!" And in fact, I did. Somebody gave me as a housewarming present, and I put it up proudly. Uh, like the three, it's like three stormtrooper, just their heads, and they look like Che Guevara. <laughs> that's cool backgrounds. and i'm like oh that's yeah. awesome but now i feel like eh, skip it but you're 22 so do whatever you true. want true all right now he's got to paint the whole house and this is the last straw he's not yeah. happy about he and him and his jeans are not happy his jeans are back in style by the way they are they actually yeah. are i know it's crazy i mean what a job by the way painting the whole house with that one brush and he's got to do side to side yep Okay, so here we go. Now this is <coughs> we we've arrived. We've arrived at the scene that I contend is one of the best five scenes in movies, and uh, I hope you all enjoy this at home. He's he's fed up. What have I been doing? I've been washing your cars. I've been. You see this? He's been, hasn't been learning anything. You've learned a lot. Here we go. This is like a musician. They don't want to practice their scales. They just want to learn songs, right? They want to get straight to the songs. He doesn't yep. realize the scales are what you need to learn those songs. It's, that's exactly right. Except on the bass, you can just wing it. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he's now he's saying, show me that first chore I gave you. Oh, first we get the Miyagi magic. 
Yeah. It warms up the hands. Yep. Oh, and you, yeah, the satisfying crack here you can hear in the shoulder. And then See, they talking. have an issue when Ray can do this in the, in the Rise of Skywalker. They don't have any issue when Miyagi can do it. A little force healing. <laughs> oh, God. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> the two of you guys. I don't want to get either of you started. <laughs> Missed opportunities. Okay. But you've got to get on the Mandalorian, Mister Missed Opportunities. No, I know. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm almost at the end of season one now. <laughs> <laughs> You're almost a few years from us. <laughs> I know. I think like I said during the Empire uh, commentary when we were together. I was like, "Let's do the sequels and let's just rip them apart." Because I knew everyone else on the the stream loved them, and I was like, yeah. I, I was, "This is one of my people right here." What about oh, <laughs> I would be, I would so be in for that. I probably wouldn't be hugely popular uh, cor on a corporate level. Yeah, uh, corporately point. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah, point. Yeah. I mean, he's starting oh, to get it. He's starting mm, to, have but maybe a little bit. Yeah, he's got that face too. Like he's just got such a the acting by him in this scene. I think is by both of them is fantastic. Yeah. And the way that the, these varied shots is good, it gives you like a, a realistic sense of this karate, karate, sorry. Karate. There's a shot later on when they get to the tournament that goes handheld that I was like, that's so cool. As soon as they get to it, they're like in the middle of this crowd and it, they go handheld and it makes it feel like chaotic. It makes it feel like we're not used to this. Like right. I'll point it out when it happens, but like yeah, you were saying, the director deserves more credit. Totally. This and is... watching this last night, talk about acting. He's throwing those punches. Yeah. Those that's are coming only... in fast. That's the only way it can work. Oh, so good. Pull back. There we go. Oh, here we This is awesome. Throw the kitchen sink at him. Yeah, he just Boom. goes off. Oh, so great. Oh, look, I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the respect. So great. That look. I know. And again, Perfect. It's, it's like a, as an audience, for the audience, it's such a, we, like, we can do it moment. Like, we might win this thing. Yeah. Which is always such a satisfying him practicing as he's leaving is great too. Yep. And we talked about, you know, like Rocky going up the steps and you like believed in him. Like, here we go. It as kinda... a writer, like what, what lesson can you take from that? The way they built that? Well, God, you know, honestly, the writing was a very good, like garnish for that scene. But that scene was all about the way it was staged, the music, the performances by those two actors and the physical karate seeing is believing like you're seeing all that, as you pointed out, like those are hard punches coming. It looks in. real. Yeah. It looks so legit. It, it, it was really the writing that contributed to that scene was really more about the writing that's happened before that moment where like, he doesn't believe it's working, how fed up he was, you know, and going back even further than that, just that they started working together it was just a great payoff. Yeah. It's definitely been used, you know, since in other movies. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but I feel like that structure of like, oh, no, you really are learning and you don't even realize it. Yes. is one that people have revisited. Yeah. Well, and it was a, a little bit, it's not quite the same, but like in Shawshank, when uh, Andy Tudor's the sort of rock and roll inmate, to get his GED and like, yeah. and he's mm. like, this is so stupid. And he crumples it up. Like, I don't get any of it. And they're like, I was, uh, you did pass. <laughs> Great shot here. Amazing. Amazing. One of the things, the crane kick. One of the things my like basic brain, basic New York brain never understands is like when you go, when I went to LA for the first and only time and there's just a major city and then a beach and people go in the ocean there. And I'm like, 
this doesn't compute. Like, I'm, Bob, you went out there recently too. Like, yeah. did, did you have the same kind of feelings? It, it's so weird being able to go into the city and then 20 minutes later be in the in the ocean. Oh my God, you guys sound like the LA tourist board from the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They're literally right, like yeah, yeah. one right, minute from yeah, yeah. downtown to the ocean. <laughs> this guy attacking the bass players, attacking the, <laughs> the, the New Yorkers. Come on. Change, man. I mean, I, LA I changed him. I lived there for so long, and and I think I went in the ocean once. Like it just the ocean is not that big. The ocean back east is a much bigger draw for me. I don't know why. Hmm. I feel like much more of you're an Atlantic purist. I guess so. I feel with the Pacific. What's that? You don't fuck with the Pacific. I like it. I love. Hey, listen. I love Moana. I see it's beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) Like I get it. I I love. uh, Yeah, that's that's. That might be the best Disney movie, by the way. I love Moana. I'm glad you Hard said that. Cosine. I'm a yeah. big Moana. Like, I love Moana. I've talked about it in the office, and people are like, it's not as good as Frozen. And they look at me like oh. I'm crazy. I oh. love Moana. Coley oh, looks Moana. at me like he's like, he's like, the, the ocean's such a crutch. It just helps her whenever she needs any help. It's like, yeah, because it's fine. I don't know. It's the ocean. It's, it's Disney magic. Yeah. The I force mean, is a crutch in Star Wars, ain't it? Yeah. Like, you know, in Frozen, she like shoots like ice out of her fingers. That's- Sub-Zero. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought I would die with Lion King or Toy Story. I mean, if you want to consider that a Disney movie, because it was a pre-Pixar purchase as the best Disney movies ever, without a doubt. And then I saw Moana. I'm like, oh, it's not. And I've watched that movie a ridiculous amount of times because my daughter was like of the age when it came out. So we watched it. The music's great. I mean, I mean, Bob, that's your guy, too. I forgot yeah, about that. Lin-Manuel that definitely great. changes everything. Bob, that's your dude. So I am a Lin-Manuel <laughs> guy. Uh, that's to me. Moana is by far his best work. It's so good. I mean, the the main theme in it, the "You're Welcome" theme, the Bowie inspired song that the crab has in it. Yep, yep, phenomenal. And the rocks in it. I mean, like so yeah, done. Yeah. You know, Come on, the rock. Rock. Yeah. Yeah. he's got tattoos so that damn. move that talk to him. It's good stuff. Uh, I love the the Mad Max inspired scene with the little coconut guys. Oh, great, amazing, amazing. Yeah. Every every beat, it's it's almost like in the way that Raiders of the Lost Ark went from great sequence to great sequence to great sequence. Like Moana does that too. Yeah, there's very little wasted time in that movie. No downtime. Great animation too. Just like a beautiful movie to watch. All the water stuff, the the glowing stuff, the lava monster at the end. Yeah, who looked like Rihanna? Oh, when, never realized when, that when she turns into the sort of island. And, and oh, oh yeah oh at the end when she turns end. green yeah she does yeah, she is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the heart of Tafiti. look at those shorts i know <laughs> yeah. probably back in style <laughs> yeah the shirt solid three-quarter sleeve baseball tee solid never went out of style never hope it never does no I know. It's a classic, and and especially for me, guy real skinny, um, can't fill out many sleeves. Three quarter shirts are very good for me. <laughs> yeah, it gives you a little extra sort of pop. I got a three quarter sleeve shirt, baseball sleeve shirt at Star Wars Celebration. It's my favorite shirt I own, maybe, and it's a uh, Max Rebo, and it says the Max Rebo band, but it looks like the Blues Brothers. Awesome. Good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you're still in that zone of loving that shit. <laughs> love it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Love that's it. great. Yeah, there's a lot of good uh, training going here from Miyagi. He's getting him in the right mindset. Yeah, now he's got Daniel fully committed, too. Yep. Yep. It's, it's like a, a Belichick player. He's committed to the program. Right? <laughs> they, we had to check that off. Every time you're on, I feel like there's a Patriots reference somewhere. <laughs> we got to it, everyone. They bought in. We just did a, a bit on an upcoming family guy with the, the bit is Bill Belichick's Christmas album. Uh, and Mike Henry does a very funny Bill Belichick and, you know, playing sweeping music. And it's all stuff like, you know, I'm, uh, you know, on the, First day of Christmas, my true love gave to me uh, $4 million and a player to be named later. You know, like <laughs> very funny. Making me laugh. I love that. Do you struggle for, for like writing Family Guy and uh, like not putting in references to the shit that you love specifically? 
Well, yeah. I mean, and I think I feel like that'd be my biggest struggle. I would just want to like reference Oasis and shit in every episode. By the way, that'd be great. Like that's what you got to go with. And that's what every all the writers on the show do that. They do some version of that from their own lives, like something they know about, something they love, and then it's a discovery for everyone else or everyone else is kind of aware of it, but you know, we have guys from Chicago on the show and they know Chicago stuff sports uh, better than the rest of us. And we got a, a guy from Oregon who's always doing that. Like he's always talking about apples and trees and birds. <laughs> and like he's just got all that shit down. Um, and it works. It works for the show. How, how large is the writer's room at this point? How many people? I God, I think we're like, we're over 20. It's wow. like around 20, 22, maybe. That's awesome. That seems like just like a fun time sitting around with like tw- 21 other very funny people that are yeah. all kind of into the same thing that you are. We usually, it's usually similar to almost like not barstool because we don't all work together in that big group setting, but like yeah. definitely bounce ideas off of each other. Yeah, no, and also we're more similar to you guys than you think because most we spend almost the entire day in three separate rooms of like seven people in each okay, one, yeah. kind of working on a specific spot in the show that needs help. Oh, there's the fungus. You must be into fungus. She's there at the club. He's about to regret this outfit that he picked out as well. I know. And Johnny's hair, we got to mention it here. It's absolutely stunning. It's so perfect. It looks like the hair of a, a Lego figure that you can yes. just like <laughs> boop, boop. <laughs> and you plop it on. Yep. Lloyd. Oh, yeah. That's oh, man. I mean, in no world, even if you got spaghetti spilled on you, would you ever have a stain like that? <laughs> no, that, <laughs> that looks like in, in the WWF when Hulk Hogan would like blade himself way too much. And you'd be like, oh, my God, he's going to bleed out in the ring. <laughs> That That's what his trunks would look like. Was there like a spaghetti gun that they had that went off by mistake? Because it doesn't seem like it's possible to get it. The Homer like... Simpson makeup gun full of spaghetti <laughs> meatballs. It was like to serve an army barracks. Yeah. So bring a tray. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, this is what? Right after Halloween? You don't wear white after Labor Day. It's kind of his fault. Uh, <laughs> That's true. Does that hold up in, in California? Because I don't know. Is California abides by the – like those are feels like an East Coast rule, but – I don't yeah, know goes. I, mean, I don't no know. Idea. I never California white might always be in style. They might be like, yeah. "Come on, it's Cali." And no way you don't go home and change. Like you're sitting there in disgusting sauce. Disgusting. That One of my cool. worst experiences ever. I went to Abu Dhabi back in January. This the experience wasn't bad, but um, the flight home, an 18 hour flight from Abu Dhabi to Las Vegas, just oh horrible the guy next to me requested a drink on the plane he gets you know the little cup with no lid on it and of course falls asleep the drink spills onto my sock i had a wet sock for an 18 hour flight home oh god Mm. is there anything worse than a wet sock you can't do anything you can't take it off no well i did i went to the bathroom i took it off and i just tried to fan it out and then i put it back on and you know like I wasn't going to put my bare foot in my shoe. I think that's gross. Yeah. It was a whole dilemma, but I'm here now. You know, I've made it. And it it was, uh, we got not an offer, but there's going to be a boxing match happening in Saudi Arabia probably this year. And large was like kind of making a push. He's like, let's, let's go to that. And I was like, buddy, I'm never going back to the middle East. I love you. That'll be a solo trip for you. Right. They have some crazy weed laws there, man. (laughs) I'm sure. Yeah, what, you what just can't they? bring it. If if you yeah. get caught with even the smallest portion, it's uh, four years in prison. Jesus! Wow. Yeah. So like, I'm gonna kick it back here. About to be legalized in Jersey. It's good stuff. I thought it already was. Well, it is, but we don't have like dispensaries yet. Oh, got it. They're still about to uh, come up. Because I'm heading to Jersey next weekend, so I was hoping it was all <laughs> settled. Yeah, okay, good. I'll be. Look at that! Because of your commentary on the Karate Kid, you can now plan ahead. Like, wh- who knows how life works? It's crazy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 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 I, you Little know, backstory what? and Miyagi here for his wife as well. Yeah, yeah. like 
you don't like seeing something like this, but you just love a guy who loved his wife this much. You know, I always loved Robin Williams in Goodwill Hunting. You can tell he just loved his wife, and it's sad, yeah. obviously, but it's just nice to see. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. And also completely unrealistic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a little drunk here. Yeah. There was something on the IMDb. Let me pull it back up. It, it had a little tidbit about the drunk Miyagi scene. Here it is. When Mr. Miyagi is drunk and celebrating an anniversary, he reveals that he served in the army in the 442nd Regimental Combat Team. The unit, comprised of mostly Japanese Americans, many of whom had fought in inter internment camps, fought in Europe during World War II. It became the most highly decorated unit in the history of the United States military. Wow. A little it fun back. fact for you, yeah. That's awesome. I didn't know the Japanese made their way into Europe during the war. I, I, well, but, but it was Japanese Americans. So, oh, yeah. Japanese Americans. Okay, yeah, duh, duh. they were fighting for us. Alec, are you a history buff? You kind of come off as a history buff at times. When I, when you made me watch all the presidents' men, you had some facts about that that they didn't talk about in the movie. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not a history buff. I would never categorize myself that way. But the, the things that I do know about i enjoy learning about so there are certain small yeah small things in history that i have like a slightly better than average knowledge of but for the most part i'm pretty terrible with that stuff like same. i'm, I'm very, the same way in that like i'll really dive into the stuff i like everything else i can fuck off yeah exactly Bob, when you were going to give us the fun fact about the drunk scene, I thought it was going to be like Miyagi actually, you know, Pat did actually drink during this to get into mm -hmm. character. And he, it was like Andre the Giant. He drank 18 <laughs> crafts of wine yeah, and wow. was still able to like, you know, walk home. No problem afterwards. Nice. I just saw that Evan Peters did. Uh, he had a drunk scene in Mayor of Easttown, the new HBO show. And they said to get like the drunk feeling, he was doing shots of apple cider vinegar. Whoa. Which just seems like, yeah, it would give you that gross feeling. Yeah, I don't might, know how healthy that is either, but yeah, that might get you in just sort of the spine tingling, yeah, rough shot kind of like headspace. Have you watched that either of you guys, Mayor of Easttown? No. I watched episode one and I feel like I kind of enjoyed it. Um, but I, I didn't, I would, I would keep going. I feel like it just keeps getting better, to be honest. Yeah, no, she's good, and I hear people who I trust talking about how good it is including you robbie oh wow thank you <laughs> i always love the the back and forth top five list between you guys it's such a game respect game you guys talk it <laughs> out like i always just love love watching it i can never like put together a list and i don't want it to get picked apart you i mean but robbie knows as with the stoolies yeah i can't i i said the other day just off the cuff because i love die hard i was like Die Hard 3 is the best third movie in the history of movies, and I'll fight to the end. And then I just have the, the Lord of the Ring people coming at me. The yeah. Rocky, and I was, three, yeah. Rocky 3. And I'm like, well, guys, listen, Like John McClane is my idol. He's my movie poster right here. So um, nice. It's like, that's my guy. We can all like just agree, but um, I love that you guys, and you guys put it out there too. And then you guys, yeah. your mentions, I'm sure you see what comes up from uh, just like the most harmless jack top five jackets, right? <laughs> oh, right. and it's always like, I'm sure it's the same thing with Alec. Like you think about your list, but you don't really, really think about your list. Like you put like right. a good five minutes of thought into your list, where if you put 10 minutes of thought into your list, you would probably have like the concrete ones. Totally. But as soon as you put it out there, you'll get like five tweets right away with like your favorite shit in the world. And you're like, ah, oh, I, I know, I know. I know it's that's a hundred percent correct. I'm always like, ah, I fucked up. I forgot that one. Like I yeah. forget one of the, I don't know. I forgot to mention Darth Vader in something like it was like, <laughs> you know, and it was not this. Oh, was, was, I, I remember his best star Wars noises. Right. And you forgot to mention like Darth Vader's breath. Yes. Yeah. That's it. And that's, that was a huge oversight. Huge. And you're right. If you just spend a few more minutes thinking about it, you'll that's great, that mean directing all over this. These can all be computer backgrounds. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is great. And that's the poster. Yeah. I love the, the umpires or catcher's mitt, whatever he's wearing here. Yeah. And by the way, as Daniel son is preparing for the karate tournament, you can prepare by getting yourself some HelloFresh, some clean, 
uh, healthy eating. They've got something for everyone. I tell you guys about this, not every week, but every other week, I want to say. Get fresh, pre-measured ingredients, mouth-watering, seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Skip trips to the grocery store. You save a ton of money as well. I mean, you get better value here. HelloFresh is 28% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store and 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal without sacrificing the quality. They have great stuff. Clem, you've made this stuff yourself, right? Hardcore uh, cosign on this one. Uh, the wife and I did it together, um, and it was like we're like, wow, this food is actually like really, really good. <laughs> it was restaurant quality. We'll, we'll there, put it at that. There you go. So confirmed by someone that's actually had it. They offer twenty plus twenty twenty five plus recipes to choose from every week. Vegetarian meals, craft burgers, extra special gourmet options. They've even got faster options. So it's like if you want to, if you only have twenty minutes to make a meal, get this one. There you go. You've got the pre-measured ingredients, so you're not going to have extra stuff lying around after you make the meal. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 12Robbie right now. Then use the code 12Robbie, R-O-B-B-I-E. You'll get 12 free meals, including free shipping. 12 free meals is a hell of a deal we're providing for you. And now, I don't know if they've got birthday cakes with HelloFresh, but we've got a birthday cake in the Karate Kid. That's actually um, – they actually have the cooking The cooking scene is one of the scenes that was deleted where he teaches – Miyagi teaches him how to cook, and then that's one of like his like blocks. Yeah. <laughs> deleted scene. <laughs> deleted scene. <laughs> this is so wholesome. Just a, just a two-man birthday party. I know. This is one of the all-time great friendship stories just in a movie. Like as I'm just rewatching, it's just so delightful to, to see it all come together like this. Ah. You know, you know who does that well, uh, male friendship movies is um uh Peter Weir. If you look up Peter Weir's film, he he's films, he's done like there was a great early 80s movie called Gallipoli with Mel Gibson when he was like very young. It's about World War One. It's a great male friendship movie. It's about him and his friend getting sent off to war. Uh, he did Dead Poet Society, which is yep. kind of a good one. Master and Commander, which is a great male friendship story between Russell Crowe and Paul and Vision. The um, show he did, which is not yeah. necessarily a, a male bonding story, but he's got a friend in that that you know yep. you you want to root for. He did The Way Back was his last movie in 2010. This is the scene that I was talking about before as well when I talked about just such a like damn what a wholesome moment, what a wholesome scene when he asked him who made the Oh, where'd you get this? He says, my wife made it. And she's like, wow. He says, if you ever want this back, I'll give it back to you. And he says, like, I, I understand. And he's like, I know you understand that. That's great. Back and forth is like, damn, these two really are like they're family at this point. I know. And it's it's so true. And I, as much as I hate hearing it, you always there's like a stereotypical network note for scripts, which is like add more heart. And like as a comedy writer, that that note is annoying. You know, you're like, fuck that. Just add more jokes. But the truth of the matter is like when you add heart in the right way and you get people performing it the right way, like there's nothing better. There's nothing. Yeah. Better. There's there's no joke that can, can compare to like E.T. and Elliot flying across the moon, you know. So and, and, and again, this friendship here is absolutely fantastic and totally believable you like you don't spend a lot of time thinking like okay there's this high schooler and this 51 year old guy and where's the mom and like what's that no you yeah, just no. buy their friendship completely it's almost like marty and doc like yeah. it's kind of weird that he's hanging around this old guy all the time but it does, you don't you don't care no no you totally buy that another i mean michael j fox in that deserves a, a retroactive oscar they should do retroactive Oscars. I they love that should. idea. I, I That's think about such a good that idea. Time. I think about that all the time. Like it would be so great to just say, like, take it. You were great. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about uh, movies with heart. When you said that right away, two animated movies came to mind right away, and both of them are from the team of Lord and Miller. First of which would be Into the Spider Verse, where you look at that. That's a movie with heart. Just all over it. Miles yeah. Morales, you, you want to believe in him by the end, by the what's up danger scene. And then another one, which is a recent one that I've recommended to both of you. I don't know if either of you have watched it yet, but it's the Michels versus the Machines. It is uh, produced by them. I forget what the director's name is, but man, it's, it's so funny and it's got so much heart in it. It's like a family road trip animated movie. Right. 
I seriously, I'm recommending that to everyone. It's my is favorite it? movie I saw in 2021. Wow. You did recommend that to me. Is it, is it good for kids? It's great for kids. Okay. I took Bob up on his offer. I said to the wife, I said, we have family movie night tonight. Let's try this out. Cause Robbie recommended it. And my um, six year old, was said that was one of the best movies I've ever seen. And the parents both loved it too. So, and the, the three-year-old didn't move too much during it. So then that's as good as you're going to get for him. So uh, definitely highly recommended from everyone in, in my family, at least. So I'm definitely. so Sienna loved it. That's like, yeah. I, I feel great recommending a good movie to the fam. And it, it's one of those movies too, that like, it, it, it feels just like internet and some modern stuff. So it even keeps your attention in this crazy 2021 world we're living in. So yeah, two thumbs up to uncle Bob on that one. Great work. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's awesome. I will definitely check it out. That seems yeah, let like me know. Family movie night. Great movie jacket from Daniel right here. Almost the, uh, what is it, like the James Dean Rebel Without a Cause. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I, I think it's the same. I think he was actually wearing it in the scene when he got spaghetti, but it's back. Oh, you're right. Oh. He's wearing it over his outfit, over the white. Mrs. LaRusso could get any stains out. She must have been using that good stuff in the 80s. Jeez Louise. Hold on. I have a jacket that I – oh, that probably sounded horrible on audio. I'm sorry for the listeners if you heard that. I have a jacket that I got to put on for the scene. It just looks just like that. Do it. Man, I, I have to say, finding out that he is actually illegally old enough to drink in this scene, let alone drive a car, it's kind of <laughs> kind of broken yeah. my brain here. <laughs> I know. It's funny. I, th- I thought he was older than 22, but I knew he was, you know, an adult. Yep. Yeah, this boy, the Saturday nights of the 80s look so simple and fun. <laughs> All right. Love it. Jacket. There we go. Lee. Nice. Sort of kind a of Kansas, City, Kansas City Chief Red kind of. Yeah. I once was so embarrassed as a, as a kid. I'm a Red uh, Washington football team fan uh, and was raised that way. So as a kid trick-or-treating, I once went up to someone's house and they opened the door and they were wearing a Chiefs jersey. But just like through my mask or whatever, the colors look like Redskins jersey. And I was like, love your jersey. I'm a Redskins fan, too. He was like, I'm a <laughs> Chiefs fan in front of all my friends. And it was humiliating. Oh, uh, you could have said, but the mask. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So he's trying to they, – they're in a bad place right now because he saw Johnny kissing her. And he didn't know the, the backstory, which is that Johnny basically mouth raped her. Yep. Mm-hmm. He forced it like uh, mm-hmm. Ric Flair and Miss Elizabeth at WrestleMania 8. <laughs> <laughs> you had that one. But kind of a theme in Avelson movies. Uh, Rocky has been revised now with the Rocky love scene where he kind of puts a little bit of a little bit too much pressure on Adrian. That, mm-hmm. on that first yeah. date, which he definitely does. You can't argue with that. Yeah. It's like I still I still love them. <laughs> every every fighting movie needs this you need yeah. just a little bit of conflict before the big match before the big fight to throw you off yep and Make her the audience friend, think is his head really in this does he is he really all the way in there her friends were so happy like oh this guy's finally out of the picture she finally made that mistake and they're like don't try it dang stay out of here she yeah. wants no part of you yeah, she called him fungus. I mean, how, how much lower <laughs> did you have to go? How many organisms are lower than fungus? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the living organism. Uh, uh, mold? Is that the only one worse? <laughs> <laughs> You're mold. Like, yeah. Oh. All right, he's figuring out that it was an unwanted advance. Yeah, he just figured out that she actually hit him afterwards. Got to feel kind of dumb after that. Yeah. He has very long legs. Yeah. Hey, slugger. I don't know if that's a good, I don't know what kind of woman likes to hear slugger. <laughs> yeah. I come up to her. Hey, Sarge. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? What up, chief? <laughs> yeah. uh, Seeing a water park open at night is kind of stark too. I feel like they're usually closed by this point now. Gotta oh, be closed at night. I mean, that's, that's a post. Uh, what is that? HBO movie like Action Park. Oh right, right. <laughs> it's like after that got shut down, they were like, "All right, that's way too dangerous." Allowing kids on those things that, in the darkness. <laughs> I guarantee you, this place was open at night. It's a very California thing. Mm. I would love to go to a water park at night. That seems like a blast. Yeah. Well, you're 22. 
<laughs> to me, that seems like a nightmare. But <laughs> if, if we can go shirts and skins, I think we'll. So we'll be shirts. You go down and skins. <laughs> All right. So they've made up. Clearly, yeah. Wins are back pretty quickly. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That might be the first kiss we've seen between them. It's going in for it. Oh my god! god. Oh little my jersey. Goodness. Little <laughs> winner of the Gabagool. Yeah, he's <laughs> reaching for it. He's trying to reach down to the South Jersey there. <laughs> good '80s run on her. She's got a good '80s girl run. <laughs> Backing in after the day you get your license—that is some fucking. I know. Stuff. That's that's a continuity error right there. There's no way he would have backed oh, in. That's true. Oh, and now you drive it. Yeah, that that you just I would never let anyone do that, you know, and if I were in Daniel's situation. Yeah. Even if it was the girl of my dreams, it'd just be like, I just can't do that. He just gave me the key made by his wife. They they dismiss her so quickly in the beginning of two. Like just, Is she in the beginning of two? No, she's not in two. And they oh, clearly yeah. just they need to address it by saying like you know, what happened with Allie? Like, uh, it's over. <laughs> like they, just, <laughs> they just brush it away in one line. That's what they're going to do with Gina Carano on the Mandalorian. Season. <laughs> <laughs> I know well, that's what they did. I, I'm, I'm, I know make fun of me all you want. I still watch idol. I love it. Oh yeah. And, uh, they got rid of that kid this week. Cause he was in some video where his friends were wearing like a, like KKK style hoods. So like they're only a competitor on the show. Yeah. There were only oh, five wow. people five people left and he was one of them. He was this young kid who played country and he looked like a little intense and scary, but then the video came out and he got kicked off the show and Ryan Seacrest starts the show. He's like, good evening, America. Caleb uh, Haney was no longer with us tonight. And we have four wonderful kids like that. He <laughs> done like that. Just as quickly as possible. Get past yeah. it. Yeah. They, they poochied him. Don't talk about it. Oh, I think one of the, uh, this guy here, that might be Steve McQueen's son. So there was an action star from the 60s and 70s, Steve McQueen. Big, like, yeah. one of the biggest names in Hollywood. It's sort of what the uh, Leonardo DiCaprio character in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was sort of based on? Uh, no. No. Okay. But there was, uh, it was the guy, um, what's his name? Damian Lewis. You know, remember him, the redhead guy from Homeland? Tonight. Bobby Axelrod. And Band of Brothers. Billions. Yeah, Billions. Anyway, he's in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He does play Steve McQueen. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. By the way, we're about to get to the uh, – this is a great like little back and forth about allowing both of them there with the translation. And then Miyagi lets out the – uh, you're welcome after he says thank you at the end <laughs> yes um but right after that we'll get to the handheld shot which i was talking about before where it's like a little shaky as they're walking into the gym let's see love that official shirt i was thinking that last night as i saw this like that's kind of cool <laughs> oh you're right i could smell that gym i could smell oh, it just like oh absolutely those yeah. mats and those the mats just like you can smell like the indoor pools whenever you see them. Yep. <laughs> oh. So that shot of them walking in, that like just the fact mm. that they stayed on it as one shot kind of goes up there. They're like just very cool. It's weird because it had a handheld feel in the middle, but clearly it's on a dolly and a crane here. So I wonder if they were just rolling there was a transfer or yeah. Maybe they were rolling it over like cables and to create that. <laughs> yeah. All right, first fight. What do you got, Daniel? Is this Man, gonna going to a, a legit karate meet? It seems like it would be a great time. Never been to one myself. I mean, you go to like wrestling meets in high school. I was friends with the wrestling team, so I'd always go to those. Those are fun. Crowd yeah. gets really into it. Totally. But karate, like strikes are being thrown. I'm in for that. Yeah, well, that's that's you all over now. Yeah. All right, here he's coaching him up, coaching him up. Belichick making some first quarter adjustments. <laughs> I love that he showed up in the, in the suit, right? With a, the long collars as well. Like Miyagi shows up looking like it's business. Everyone else is in their, their workout attire. Yep. I this, wanted to point out Elizabeth's shoe too. Just an outstanding outfit by her as well. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, she she knew it was game day. That's solid <laughs> 80s right there. That's uh, Giselle watching Tom. <laughs> and if, yeah, right. And of course, okay, here the music starts right here. The 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 famous "You're the Best Around" just starts playing right now. Now now we're we're in it. This right. has got to be top five '80s montages with songs, right? I mean, Rocky is obviously there. This. What else do you get? Like, like well, a, we got Rock, suit up. Rocky Four, uh, because Rocky is in the seventies. The first, yeah, 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 yeah. Rock, I was going to say Rocky Three or Four. Th- those were the two I, I would pick from. Four is probably the more iconic one in the snow. Rocky Four has uh, no, but that has Rocky Four. If you watch it again, it's like twenty percent montage. <laughs> well, it's got the yeah, <laughs> on the beach as well, right? Him and Apollo running. Well, yeah, well, that's three. The original three is them running on the beach, but in four, he thinks about them running on the beach. So they <laughs> play it as part of a montage. It's when Apollo has just died and Rocky is angrily driving his Ferrari around the town, just thinking, and they use just all clips from the first three movies. So it's like, uh, you know, I think Rocky Four is like maybe 60 minutes of original material. Yeah, it's like the Snyder Cut they were saying. There's like an actual like 17% of the movie with slow-mo shots. Like just a, that much of Rocky IV's montage. Right. Totally true. Apparently was- he's redoing that, right? Like there's going to be like the uh, like the fucking Stallone cut or something of Rocky IV. And he's taking the robot out. Really? Yeah. Oh, that robot was like Jar Jar for him? Yeah, he said, he said he doesn't want the robot in there anymore. Happy birthday, but- Polly. I know. (laughs) I I always appreciated that they had the other kid who wasn't Cobra Kai or Daniel that was like, are this kid's legit too? Like, it's not just a two man. uh, Yeah. It's an an Asian kid and he does look like he's by far better than everyone in the tournament. (laughs) He's like doing major moves. Oh, he got this guy. Got him. And Miyagi, like Belichick, is just kind of stern the whole time. He doesn't oh, get yeah. excited. He doesn't get too upset. Nope. Stone cold. Uh, I love Dutch. I always think that's his first name for some reason, too. He just looks like a Dutch, even yeah. though that's his last name. Well, that's – I'm pretty sure that's, that's McQueen. Steve, yep. Steve McQueen's kid. Oh, very blonde. That's got to be colored. Still blonde. Almost albino. It's those yeah. eyebrows messes you up. Yeah. That is something that messes you up. You watch the first Thor movie again. They dyed Chris Hemsworth's eyebrows for that. Really? Yeah, they didn't do it for any of the other ones. They learned their lesson. It looks it looks weird now, especially now that he kind of has the shorter, like browner, more natural hair. We we had a, a break recently from work, and and I chose to, to use that time by watching like phase one of the Marvel cycle again. <laughs> I actually had never seen like the dark world or, Oh, I think you texted me during the dark world. Yeah. And you were like, this was not great. Not good. (laughs) Yeah. Iron Man two and three were not awesome either. No, there were some dark days there and they saw they turned it all around pretty quickly, but I I saw dark, the dark world the other day. And I was like the last half hour, I was like, Ooh, wow. This is the best part of the, you know, the end of the movie too. Ooh. I know. I definitely have the hot take of I like the Dark World better than the first Thor, just because I think the first Thor is so boring. I don't even really remember. First Thor was a lot of jockeying for uh, uh, Odin's place, right? Yeah, between Thor and Loki. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like Loki wasn't like his full like he wasn't what we know him as now yet. No, he wasn't. Not nearly as funny. Exactly. They didn't let Tom Hiddleston like have fun with the character. Like that show I'm, I'm looking forward to a lot. I think that show is going to be awesome. Uh, it, yeah. It'll probably be like Doctor Who but with Loki. Exactly. Which sounds awesome. Given yeah, the, guy, the CGI budget of the uh, MCU. Yeah. I saw something about what, what some show they're making for Amazon that's like that really it was made. Oh, Lord of-, of the Rings. Yes. Right, right, right. Yeah. Every episode has like a hundred million dollar budget or some shit. Crazy. <laughs> this um, kid is just using too many aerial moves. You're gonna exhaust yourself. Let like, me say oh. this though. Daniel's lucky that he didn't have to face him because Miyagi didn't prep him for that aerial shit. That's no. true. <laughs> no. If that guy yeah. came flipping at Daniel, he'd be like, Oh my god, what the fuck? I know. 
That's a whole different chore he would have had to have him do, like trim That's, the trees. You see him on the sidelines right now, like he's fucking sweating. He's like, "Oh my god, this guy better not be Johnny." That was yeah. the cooking scene that got deleted. It was he was like chopping up. Chopping up. <laughs> yeah, the fruit ninja. He was like in the air chopping them. <laughs> yeah, Machio's like the every year that I grew up, the Lakers watching the Eastern Conference just beat the shit out of each other until somebody <laughs> got to the finals, it's like Pistons, Bulls, Celtics, Bucks, all just killing each other. Like who did Magic have to play? They had like the Twin Towers a couple times with Olajuwon and Samson. And like, yeah, who else was even out there in the West? No, no one. Yeah, the West was the Lakers for so long. You That's why basketball guy, Sulkin. I mean, I was. I'm a big basketball guy from like a specific era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm more, much more of a casual fan now, but I still love the game, and I acknowledge that the the skill level in the game today is off the charts. It's crazy. You're you're mainly a football guy, would you say, in terms of sports that you like? Football, and I mean, I watch the Red Sox too, but like definitely the Patriots. You know, after what they've given me, of course, of course. Oh, all right. So here he got illegally kicked after the sensei told him to. Bobby didn't want to do it either. He didn't want to do it. He kind of got screwed out of even having a chance to win the title. I almost feel bad for Bobby. He was yeah, the order yeah. was ordered. He's sympathetic. What would yep. Crosshair say, Bob? Uh, good soldiers follow orders. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You, yep. That's from the Bad Batch, the new Star Wars cartoon. Oh, nice. Yep. Is it good? It is. It's a lot of fun. If you liked the Clone Wars, or you know, if you're into that style at all, it's very much a continuation of that. But it is good, at, and it's something that me and Clem love is any order 66 content and it begins during order 66 and you get to see that from a different perspective, which we're in for every awesome. time. Oh, that's great. Yeah. We're, we're saying give us all blip content, like after the blip and then order 66 is like the star Wars version of that almost. Yeah. Order 66. I remember I saw that in the theater and, and when, when Yoda sm- sniffed it out and beheaded those two guys, the, the crowd went nuts. It's awesome. Great moment. He's got that court awareness. Did, did you know that? Uh, <laughs> did you know that in the original, I think, script, or at least there was concept art, Yoda was going to meet Han Solo in Revenge really? of the Sith like, as a child? Yeah. Oh. Which would have been uh, a bit silly considering Han didn't believe in Jedi. <laughs> yep. Well, he wouldn't have remembered if he was really young. Yeah, true. Um, that boy, that solo movie was a turd. Ooh. Yeah, that's that's. I listen. I love all Star Wars. If you put that on, I'll watch it. But out of every movie they've ever made, that's the one that I would want to rewatch the least. Yeah, I just remember several times in the theater, like being very kind of like angry and like like wincing through my teeth when they give him his name. There's just nothing worse than yeah. that. Nothing, nothing worse. Oh, you're alone, huh? Yeah. Well, I guess. Mm-hmm, I call guess. you solo. Uh, and then he decided for the rest of my life, that's me. Yep. This I, terrible, I, ju- terrible pun the guy made. I feel like it's good, though, because it made them pull the e-brake and be like, all right, we have to start fresh here. We've officially like destroyed this franchise from the room. Yeah. Oh, no. they, I think they hired Favreau like, right after that came out. Legit. I, I love that this guy looks exactly like someone who would run a karate tournament and makes his money <laughs> running local karate tournaments. I know. <laughs> This guy's and, outfit is stuck in the 70s while everyone else is enjoying the 80s. I also never realized Daniel's the one who asks for, like, you know, the – what do they call it? The the drug that you get for uh, the NFL player starts with a T. Tript and not just Trip, tryptophan. Tri- tryptophan? Tor- Toradol, Toradol, I think. Like that's Miyagi's giving him the Toradol with the hands. Yeah. But Miyagi's like, listen, we don't just break out the hands for anything, Daniel, other than your little shoulder injury. But like he, Miyagi was just ready to call it a tournament. <laughs> what was that, Miyagi? We came all this way. We, I mean, I know you have like a nice painted house and your everything looks great, but we're here to win, Miyagi. And this is classic pro wrestling. When I look at like the pro wrestlers injured and will he be able to finish the match? Oh, we're going to send out the stretcher for him. And then as he's being wheeled up, he pushes the EMTs away <laughs> and he doesn't want them and he's going back to the ring. Like It's great. And every time, you know, when that's done in front of a pro wrestling crowd, people are losing their minds, just going crazy. I can't imagine watching this in the theater for the first time in 1984, never having seen this and just like feeling the energy of like, I think he's about to do it. I know. 
I know, but it's always it's sketchy because he goes up 2-0 very quick, very yep. fast, and you're like, uh oh, something bad's coming. Also, it's it's a little questionable the points that are given out in this. Like mm -hmm. Johnny never understood that. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, that was a great move. It was. A little sweep back elbow. Yeah, well, he's got a timeout. He's got to go talk to his evil coach. Here we go. Here's the line. Oh, sweep it. I have never swept anything in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Even bad boy Johnny reacts like that. That's how you know it's a fucking great reaction. Order. Great reaction. You can feel the conflict within Zabka. <laughs> he looks like Logan Paul. I never realized that until just now. <laughs> yeah, right there, I was like, oh, he looks that that looks like the Mayweather face off they just did. Yeah. Got your hat. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what a move. Like that's not a point for some reason. Yeah, I super kicked him oh, in the no, face. That, that is that is a point. Okay, okay. Oh. He basically knocked him out there. Yeah. Cowardly. Oh, here he's got to chase him down. Chase him, stomp oh, out. Oh, the chase, yeah. Yeah. Great, uh, great choreography as well, where it's like, these kids look like they're really going after it. All right. Adults, I guess. Yeah. Grown ass <laughs> men. <laughs> yeah, see, it's. He it's shot been, very well, too. Now he that I'm looking at ready with the crane technique then at 2 2. Like, when else are you going to use it? Yeah. See mm. why that's borderline. Is that a point? <laughs> oh, oh, that's borderline a point. Like what happened there? It seems like nobody told the choreographer that there was a point system. Like what's that? They were just that's like not... do like a big karate fight at the end. So that's not a point. Somehow, a direct punch to the face. I guess you can't do that. They said, but he nailed him right in the face. And he's not penalized for it. And now, come on, if do right. And still, he's not ready with the crane. Oh, how's yeah. this a point? It's illegal, I guess, but he's not eliminated, and it's not a point. They're just like, we can't have the finals end like that. I you know? know. Miyagi got the 70s memo from the, the tournament director. <laughs> yeah, he did. Those collars <laughs> go out to his shoulders. Major. Get oh, him a body, body bag. bag. Yeah, there it so is. Smug. Oh, here we go. Okay. Get it ready, Daniel. Amazing. Amazing. Miyagi's into it. Yep. Woo! Got him. He did it. Love the winner. It. And there's yeah. your first smile from Miyagi in the whole tournament. I know. And they all finally crack one. His girlfriend comes and crushes his leg. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I can't him. put weight on this. Stop. Johnny's like, I hit him in the face eight different times. You didn't give me a point. He kicks me in the face once. He wins the championship. I know. What's going on? To make another WrestleMania reference, that's WrestleMania 6 for you. Hulk Hogan, after being defeated by the Ultimate Warriors, like, give me the titles. I got to hand them to Warrior myself. We don't talk about that, Bob. You know, I'm a Hulkamaniac. You're a Hulkamaniac. I know. That was I'm the a worst day of my life. <laughs> and they uh, end it right there. That was something I noticed last night, too. They don't tie up anything because they don't I need to. It. It's they like, don't... yeah, you just need to have him win the tournament, and you get that smile from Mr. Miyagi, and it's yep. like what he did. We he, did it. We yeah. did it. And, and my guess is I bet they had some other ending tacked on, maybe some other scene of them like at home with the mom and the girlfriend and Mr. Miyagi, like, well, we did it and I love you and whatever. And some ex somebody made the right call. and just like, why don't we just end it with him like nodding? That's, that's probably right because it is sudden. It feels sudden when you watch it in relation yeah. to like, you know, you get used to movies nowadays. Movies nowadays, I feel like, don't really end like that. No, well, maybe uh, whiplash. You get like J.K. Simmons smiling at the end of that thing, but it's a little different. Well, my friends, I happen to be re doing my research on this as well. And it's maybe originally supposed to be carried off. Wait, you just blocked your mic. You just oh, can you hear me now? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually had seen that they were the carrying off was supposed to be the end, and they reshot the smile, which they said helped him get what was it like some nomination or there was a better award. It was it would have been so huh. they actually did reshoot, and There's I love. Reshoot. We kind of, like we said with Rocky, 
where they do the flashback to start two, or is it three actually, right? And they go back to the parking lot and all that kind of stuff. Two. And you see him, two, right? And he does the honk. Yeah. I, I love that they kind of, I wish that more movies these days when they had the sequels would go back to the originals and, you know, dabble in what would have happened or what you might have missed after the uh, credits right. ran. Totally. Now that, now that you know everyone's interested in it, you can just yeah. add, add something fun. True. And it gives oh, you that, that was, immediate response from the audience. Yeah. That was a great time. You. Thank you for indulging me with that movie today. I, I love it. Love hey, it. Thank, thank you for Enjoy. joining us. Thank you for the great pick, as great always. Choice. Um, hey. fo- follow Alex Sulkin on Twitter, at the Sulk. Are you Alex Sulkin on Instagram? I am. Alex I don't, have, I don't hide myself. Yeah. And listen, all that musical ability that I was hyping up before, you could check it out on Instagram. He was being <laughs> humble, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's very impressive. Prepare to be disappointed. I uh, I thank you guys so much. I love doing this. So fun. You guys are awesome to watch a movie with. So I appreciate that. It's yeah, and, and the next cool. one, because when, when you submitted this, you submitted two movies, really. We were not submitted. I was like, what yeah. movie do you want to do? And you said, let's do either The Karate Kid or Footloose. Yeah. And I don't know if I've ever seen the full Footloose. I've seen, man, I've seen clips from it a billion times growing up with a sister that was nine years older than me and growing up in the house with her and my mom. But I think we got to do that at some point. Maybe at some point this summer, sit down and do Footloose. Footloose is one of those movies that it started small and became this huge thing that everybody knew a lot because of the soundtrack. But within the movie, like the movie that they're trying to make, the story that they're trying to tell in Footloose, like they absolutely nail it. Like you could not, they could not have done it better like it, you may not like it and just be like a dancing. I don't give a shit. But for what they were trying to do, a movie about dancing in high school and all that kind of shit, they they nailed it. That's not a perfect piece for it. And when we do Footloose, we're going to have audio. So you'll be able to hear the audio. We'll be able to hear the audio. That's a must. Come on. Yes. All right. We'll talk to everyone next week with another movie commentary.